Call the meeting to order. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion. Joe. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was wondering if we should move the uh, liquor license for approval up uh, so that it falls between the 720 and 730 items on the agenda in the event that we have representatives of the petitioners here. So where do you want to put it in, Joe? Uh, be between After the appointments? Exactly. Okay. That agreeable to everyone? Absolutely. Um, I have no absolutely. problem. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Changes in the agenda. If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, it, it passes. Citizens' comments and or concern. Oh, approval of minutes from 313. Let's do that one. We make a motion we approve the minutes from Monday, March 13th, 2023, as presented. A second it. Second. Corrections. Can I see yours? You can. I didn't have any this time. I said I, I couldn't hear Joe, any. Joe, we'll get your look and yours up, Mary Lee. Joe. Uh, this is a question on page two in the paragraph under citizens' comments and concerns. Uh, Something in I a sentence that starts, Mr. Lentz. Third line it goes on to say that uh, M. Jones will be sure to include the lines on the road with the agreement when it comes up. And I, I think that has to do with a, a plan for paving, but I'm not sure. In which case, it probably needs to be tweaked a little bit because I don't think that's clear as it stands. Joe or Mark or uh, Mike, I'm sorry. You get it right, Jim. The, um, so the lines on the road, what I said to him was that when we do the contract for, for line painting, our, our bids, that will include it. Correct. So can you suggest how that should be modified? M. Jones will be sure to include it, um, include the lines on the road with the line strike being bids this year or something like that. Okay. A uh, second comment would be in the bottom paragraph on that page uh, it's about seven lines down one two three there's uh, the word maximum is used in front of parking I think that should say to maximize parking as much as possible okay and that's it for me oh I'm sorry uh, on the last page under <coughs> select board comments and or concerns it says ML Harris asked for an updated appointment list and she feels that they should set a time to do and I think your interest Mary Lee was an, uh, to, to review ARPA requests okay that is correct that's my memory of that you all set Joe I am Dick I'm good Bob I'm good Mary Lee well I've got a question on page four um, the third paragraph down <coughs> the last line says M. Jones stated he would have to check the policy because but because it has lights and two and is complete outfitted it was not I don't understand the line this last line yeah, there. I read it too yeah, I don't, I don't understand it I Mike, think there's some words missing. For interpretation. This was about the sale of the 2015 cruiser and our, our policy because it's got police lights on it. What I was saying is um, because it has lights on it, it so it's completely outfitted. Um, it was basically because I think Mr. Lenz was asking why stuff wasn't put up for sale. And it's ex really kind of exempt from public sale because of uh, the blue lights on it. Because we sold, if we had to sell it, we'd have to take the blue lights off in it. And what Chief was saying was, it would cost us over a thousand dollars to get the lights removed. 
So Mr. Lenz was asking, he said, I think it was $10,000 uh, he thought the vehicle's worth. And once we take that, our cost off that vehicle uh, by removing the lights, it was back to where we were trying to sell it for. So, but that's what it was about the lights uh, and it kind of exempt from the normal policy. Okay, I didn't quite understand that. And then further down, this is R. Spaulding question, Little Rutland Road. M. Jones stated they all looked at the matter and how it was paid for. Who's they? Where are you? Right here. R. Spaulding. I just wondered who they is. What was I questioning about Little Rutland Road? I don't even remember. I think it was about the um, I'm going to uh, the culvert replacement we did up there. I cannot remember the gentleman's. I can't pronounce the gentleman's last name correctly. Kilchewski. There you no. go. I just wondering who is they all. I would say in that case, I might can speak to this probably better, but they would be the town staff. I would say those two guys right there and Mike, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other corrections? <clears throat> the Go. Fitting. Uh, this is not so much a correction, but uh, related to the point that Mary Lee j previously mentioned re regarding the sale of the cruiser. Um, when I checked the town policy, we are permitted to sell <coughs> to municipalities right. without uh, putting right. that question before the yep. taxpayers or without publicizing the sale and that's where it's being sold correct well, yes it's it's to a sheriff's department so they're technically not a municipality but right it, they're not either they're not a private company either. Yeah, it specifically says in that policy it's a, to a non-profit and the right um yeah. rutland county sheriff's definitely qualify as a non-profit they're a government entity yeah they're not for profit Mr. anything Chairman? else just that this is not related to the uh, minutes directly or a cor correction of the minutes, but uh, do we have the uh, rules of procedure to for us to sign tonight? Yes, we do. Great, thank you. Anything else? If not, those in favor of approving the minutes with corrections indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Citizens comments and or concerns, issues not on the agenda. Anyone who wishes to address the yes Martha okay um, I don't know if this is Martha Clifford Martha Clifford rec um, we're, we're on the, the um, agenda for later on and it says uh, request time to for, for discussion slash CVS and I didn't want to I wanted to talk about the uh, alcohol policy and what we do at the beach with the rentals for the pavilion. I just want you, this board, to take a look to see if they believe that, that we're all covered with this. Yeah. Can I do this we now? Have do we don't have copies, I don't believe. I, I have copies for you. Okay, then and why don't you pass them out and uh, you can bring that up in your discussion. How's that? Okay. Uh, Thanks, Robert. This is just a general, um, a general intro to the policy I have actually got I've gone online and taken a look at Thank it you. it was pretty straightforward okay. um, it is uh, an additional it was now this was maybe not this past season but the season before and um, it was like $75 extra for the okay. for the renter all right so we can talk, talk sure. earlier okay. sure Anything else? Yes, Mary Mary McIntyre? Yes, Mary McIntyre. Um, I have a question about the uh, the use of CVS. I understand we just went to ballot and we asked the taxpayers for 90000 and some odd dollars to pay for the upkeep on that building. I didn't see anything else on that ballot about any other departments. Being in that building. Any other departments being in the building? Wasn't the highway department? No, the DPW director is residing down there right now in one of the offices. Didn't know that. Because he just went down. Oh, yeah. Two weeks ago. <laughs> no, two weeks ago. <laughs> well. You, well, I don't. I can give him fifty cents. I guess I, I don't know. What are you asking, really? Well, what yeah. I'm, what I'm one is. 
is the board aware of it? Two, that isn't what the town people voted for. I mean, we jumped through hoops to get that building for recreation. I, I, I believe that by the statutes uh, that I have the authority to do that. Okay. Um, then it should at least let the taxpayers know what's going on in that building. I they know. They all know, Mary. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And who does Mr. Jones work for? Pardon? Who does Mr. Jones work for? The select board and the taxpayers of the town of Castleton. And the select board was not aware of it. That's not uh, true. Why are you saying that? I knew about it. Okay, well, not all members know about it. Fair enough. I, can, I, can I ask Mary a question? Sure, go ahead. To my understanding, all the taxpayers own that building, Mary, not just rec department. Oh, I, I fully understand that. Okay, then I don't understand why you're questioning <coughs> us putting the DPW in one of those offices. Because prior to that, there was nobody, prior to the vote, there was no one else in there other than you allowing REC to use it. And there was a big question over the budget and who was going to be paying for it. And to your point, Mike, I wonder if some of some fees should be pay paid by DPW's budget rather than out of the $90,000 budget. Um, one correction. The building is not owned by the town of Castleton. It's owned by the town of Castleton and Hubbardton. You're absolutely right. I'm aware of that. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that we clarified is, it. Is, is Hubbardton aware that we've now got DPW in there also? I am not. I, I don't. <laughs> I can't answer that. I, I if I won't, I'd be happy. Can I ask a couple of questions, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Mary, is the, is, uh, the DPW, I, let me ask the question before you answer it, please. Yeah. Is the DPW director interfering with the rec department functions in that building at this time in any way, shape, or form? Don't you don't know. Okay. Martha, do you know? I don't know that he is interfering with, with that. But, I mean, for, to Mary's point, is that there will be more usage down there. In my opinion, for what it's worth, so, sorry to cut you off, my opinion for what it's worth, the, the budget, if we continue to use this building as a town building and the budget goes into the future, it will be part of town building's budget. It won't be part of the highway budget, it won't be part of the rec budget, it will be a part of town building's budget. Is that correct, Mike? All right, moving on. If there's plenty of real estate in that building for the town to use it in ways that they see fit at the town manager's discretion. He has the authority to do that. So my opinion, as long as the D Department of Public Works director using office space there is not interfering with REC, then it's a non-issue. That's my opinion. I got one more comment too. This is not the first time <coughs> that the building's been used for something other than REC, Mary. During the Christmas thing, you guys had your that was one thing that I know of, and I think there was a couple other times that the building was used for. I don't oh, oh, we had meetings down there. You yeah, had meetings down there, but I, if I remember right, somebody called and asked to use the building for something one day. Used I, it for a warning. Huh? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm aware of that. Okay. And I, it's just that it, it just seems like we had to come here a lot to, at times, it felt like begging and pleading to get that on the ballot and then we don't then we two weeks three weeks um and goes in an office down there and, and gets moved okay, and well, i understand well, i under i understand no did you you're, you're miss you're misframing this okay mike go ahead i met with bo and dave and asked bo where bo wanted to be because i offered up another office they worked it out bo is where bo wants to be so this was not blindsiding anybody. Didn't, Bo didn't get displaced. This was worked out between myself, Dave, and that. So that, that's a, I think it's a misrepresentation, Mary. Well, I, I'm just an observation. Okay, thank you, Mary. Yep, you're welcome. Anyone else? Anybody on Zoom? I see a hand back there, but I can't see yeah, you I because of the podium. I'd just like to add. Is that, that you back there, Mark? Right, come up here. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to add that the DPW, you know, we go down to the village school, maintain the parking lot, take care of sinkholes, measure the fuel tanks, sure. turn furnaces on, yep. fix thermostats. You know, we don't send a bill to rack. 
I just think it's important we all should be working together and not turning it into a to do. Thank you, Brett. There's, there, there is a question on Bo's on. Uh, Bo, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone. And um, I, I, I just want to chime in too that I'm, I, I, w I definitely wasn't displaced or anything like that. And I'm quite comfortable at all uh, here in the building. And I do actually quite like the, the company of having other town folks in the building. I do think that it's also, you know, I, I, I don't think there needs to be so much charge behind the question or the answering. I think that it's highlighting a good point, which is that right now we have pending decisions to be made eventually those decisions will be made one way or another and at that point we're gonna have to have conversations about what does it look like to have certain areas of the building used for rec stuff certain areas of the building used for other departments and such and whether or not those would have cost implications to one budget or another um they're they're just conversations that'll simply need to be had and 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 i have a neighbor already which again i'm i'm happy about but um but I think that Mary might just be highlighting here that um, we should keep it in our radar just so that everyone's always comfortable. And for now, I'm, I'm quite comfortable. Thank you, Bo. That's all. Any, anyone else who wishes to address the board? Items not on the agenda. I would make the, want to make one last comment, Jim. Sure, go ahead. This has really got under my skin. I want to remind everybody that this, for this last year, every taxpayer in town has had to foot the bill for all those expenses down there. I haven't seen Rex step up to the plate and pay all those expenses that have cost the rest of the town to this point, Mary. I just okay, want to Bob. make sure it's clear on that. You are. Thank you very much. Any, anyone else? If not, we'll move on. How is Rex not stepping up to okay, the plate? Okay, Bo, you had your because... say. Thank you. And you've had your say, Mary. Thank you. We're moving on. Appointment of the remaining DRB vacancy. We have a letter requesting appointment from Yvonne DeLance. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we uh, put Yvonne DeLance on as the final uh, DRB member. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there discussion? Yes. Dick? Uh, what's the term length going to be? We have two people that are, their term is up, uh, or three people rather, their term is up on June 30th, 23 three people that are up their term is up on June 30th 24 one on 25 and one on 26 so Mary Lee um, I'm willing to support your motion I just need we just need to know what the term should be I would recommend that we have the term expire in 25 2020 June 30th 2025 is that agreeable to you uh, Mary Lee yes uh, any, anything else? I'll get right to you, Yvonne. Joe. Uh, uh, just a, a general comment having nothing to do with uh, this application, this decision. I, I think uh, as a general rule, when we appoint a, uh, a new individual to a uh, town position, we should either uh, schedule a in-person meeting with that individual uh, prior to making a decision or um, if we could agree on our expectations, deputize a, uh, a board member to have a individual meeting with that person ahead of that vote. Okay. Is that agreeable to the board? Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Oh. Pardon? No. Okay. We, we, just, we just put in three people and we didn't interview them. And I'm saying we should have. And if we didn't then, I don't think we should now. Well, I don't think, Joe. Wait a minute, one at a time. You finish, Mary Lee? Right. If we didn't interview those three, what was it, the last meeting, then I think we can put one more in without a personal interview I, as well. And, and I agree with that. I'm saying after this decision, which I support, we should change our approach to appointments. I agree with that. So you're exempting this one? Absolutely. Okay, I just want to be I just want to be sure. Yeah, I'm all. sorry if I didn't make that clear. Okay. Any other questions? Mike, if I if I recall correctly, actually I, I think the there was a recommendation at one point that the committee or commission or board interview the person before making the recommendation. So 
because we, we got this last week and, and I there's there was not a DRB meeting if that's go, even if it's going forward um, that was brought up at previous meetings um, I think Joe Bruner brought it up at one of the plan talking about the Planning Commission appointments that the the Planning Commission or the DRB or the Rec Commission should interview them first before and they make the recommendation to the select board uh, can I speak to that <laughs> Well, Joel, I defer to my senior like colleague. <laughs> um, it depends on your definition of senior, Joe. Um, I disagree with um, having the board that this person is applying to in any case, be it Planning Commission or DRB, be interviewed by that board. I think that that individual, the decision whether that individual serves on that board is up to the select board not the uh, now Joe Bruno if I recall correctly his recommendation was to have somebody attend a meeting first to see if they felt they would be a good fit or if that was something they truly wanted to do but in no way shape or form did he recommend nor would I ever agree with having that board interview a potential candidate and then having to uh, agree or disagree with their recommendation on the, this board's part. I retract my state. I agree with what he said. That, that that's, I misspoke. Anything else, folks? Did I cover that, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you folks agree with that? So we have, what, what is, let's reread that motion. <laughs> you sure? <coughs> you got it, Mike? No, uh, Allison. <coughs> Allison, do you have that motion? Mary Lee made a motion to appoint Yvonne DeLance to the last remaining DRB vacancy. With the term to expire in 2025. Did you get the uh, expiration of the term, Allison? Yeah, I had, then I had um, our Coons recommended the term expire in 2025. It'll be June, June 30th, 2025 to be specific. Okay. Bob Spalding seconded. And seconded. Any other discussion? I think Yvonne wanted a chance to speak. Yvonne Delance. Um, can you come to the podium, please, Yvonne? Sure. I can do that. that way the mic will pick you up better. <laughs> okay. Yvonne Delance from Bird's Eye. Um, I did clearly put in my letter that I did have intentions of running for select board again next year. So I don't know if that will make a difference on you wanting to appoint me for only a year or do the two year. Um, you know, because I don't think I can do both. If I won, if I ran for the slide board again. I can thank offer you. my opinion on that. Thank you, Joe. I, well, I was just going to say, that, Yvonne, is that it for you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Fine. Joe? There, there's no prohibition from being both a member of the select board and a member of the DRB. Okay. Okay, are we ready to vote on the motion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Now we thank move you. on. Move on to the appointments. We could probably do this uh, pretty quickly if you'd like to. Can we just do a motion, Mr. Parliamentarian? Can we just do a motion to approve these appointments as presented? Uh, or do we have to read Unless them out? there's objection. Yes, you may. And I'm going to make a motion that we approve the appointments for the town positions that the town manager has presented on this date as presented. Is there a second? A copy in the minutes. Is there a second? I would second that. A second. Okay. Any discussion? Yep, there's discussion. <laughs> what, Joe, what, Bob? <laughs> well, it's incorrect on here. The Rotland County Solid Waste District primary cannot be Tim Gilbert. It has to be a select board member. That's correct. That's he, correct. He can be the alternate. Yes. But he can't be the primary. Okay, correct. it's correct on here. The one that we, was in your packet? That may be, but this is what we're voting on. That's, that's correct. That's, that would be my mistake, not okay. made, the, okay. that's that's made this part. Is there, a, is there a select board member who would like to serve as the primary representative for the Rutland County Solid Waste District? I nominate Jim Lamy to do that. I will second that's, that. That's very nice of you, Bob. I will second that. Discussion. Don't you have this Hopefully there are other nominees. Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Excuse me, aye. Can, can, aye. just to make a point. Oh, I, sure. I, I'm sorry. Joe. I think what this, uh, what we're doing is amending the motion that's on the floor. Yes, correct. So we'll vote on the amended motion first, and then vote on the on the real motion. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of voting on the amended motion, indicate by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Now we'll vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion indicate Excuse by saying aye. Excuse me, Jim. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Yes, Allison. So Tim Gilbert is going to be switched to the alternate, correct? Correct. No. The yes. document that we're voting on has Tim Gilbert as the alternate. The alternate, that's, right. Yeah, that's, that's And the what Rutland County yeah. Solid Waste Rep is the select board member, which we just voted on to add to, to add Jim ne Leamy's name to this list. The, uh, the Right. Now, is that, I was asking if Tim was becoming the alternate. Correct. Correct. That, that would be correct. Oh. We, we've been okay. given it, a page that has the correct information and the agenda had the incorrect information. That's my fault. Okay. okay. What do you have for the regional ambulance service? Because the agenda does not have a person. We just got the paperwork today, so it's going to be on the next meeting. Okay. So should that be, so should that be admit, omitted from the, the motion? It was never part of the motion because I'm moving on a document that unfortunately, Allison, you don't have in front of you. But there will be a okay. copy for the minutes. Okay, okay, Allison. All right, now we're down to voting on the motion, I believe, right? Sorry. All those in favor of voting on the original motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion is approved. Move on to the liquor licenses, which we have moved up on the agenda. The first one is the Lake Bomazine Lodge, first and third, and outside consumption, Castleton Pizza Place, and Deli Incorporated i.e. Blue Cat, third class, and Robo's Creameries and General Store, second class. I believe the chief has nodded his head yes, that there are no problems with any of these. Is there a motion? I'm going to make a motion that we approve the following liquor licenses. Lake Bomazine Lodge, LLC, first and third with outside consumption. Castleton Pizza Place and Deli, third with Blue Cat Cafe, third class. Robo's Creamies and General Store, LLC, second class. Pruner's Market, PFB Incorporated, second class and tobacco. Dollar General Retail, LLC, Ooh, second class those. and tobacco. Right, didn't see those on the back. Okay. We got it, Jim. Got it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. We're now down to proposed... Proposal for software solutions of efficiency, information, transparency, and accountability. Ladies, you're up. All right. So I Come on all down. read all those emails. Hundred percent. I know you did. Thank you. That was Mike's attempt to um, do that. Is this a is tag? Anybody else waiting to come in? That's on your. There's people on there. Um, not all of them. Or if there's questions or. I didn't match them up. Okay, so we did send a lot of information last week. And included in your packet is a presentation. Did you all have a chance to read through it? Yeah. <laughs> Bob? I put aside my fishing YouTube videos to read Thank your you. stuff. I appreciate, I appreciate it. That. Because it's important. Um, so if you read through the presentation, you understand that there are four parts to this solution um, that we are proposing. Dave and Brent will propose the last piece. Um, did you have any questions about what was provided? What's the total amount you're requesting? For the three that we're presenting, Total zero dollars. How much? For the amount that we are presenting, the money has already been allocated. Okay. Okay. And that's how much? Um, 23? No, it's in here. It's in your presentation. $35,465. Okay. And that has been allocated already in the resolution under three different parts, under digitization, um, the payroll services, and the payments and forms. So, actually, do we want to hand these out? 
So if, yeah. do we have does anybody else on the screen? Well, it's, I, I think they're waiting if there's any questions about a particular yeah. product that they could. Yeah, so I'll introduce first KGov. Um, Chris Estrella should be on Zoom. Um, this is the solution that allows us to accept forms and payments online and in person. So, Bob, this solution will allow you to finally see when someone checks out at the transfer station, are they Castleton or Hubberton? And then we can run a report and see the numbers. Okay? Perfect. Okay. Right now, which I just found out that Chris was writing on the receipts that I have not tracked when he turns them in. So. We didn't know any other way to do it. Right. That was that's right. my explanation for Chris. And that's fine. That's fine. He just he j I, I saw it in the corner just recently, and I said Perfect. he called me up and said, "This is what we're doing." I said, "Oh, okay." So I don't I do not have that compiled yet, but this program is going to knock it out. You ask, it'll be there. Perfect. Okay. Um, Chris, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Thanks for joining us, Chris. I know it's almost your bedtime. No, it's, it's not. It's the opposite. It's a little bit. It's still daylight out here. All for right, me. you're in Vegas. That's right. Oh, be brief, Chris. <laughs> so, c could I ask a, a, a question? Sure, Joe. Yes. Chairman, uh, it seems that there's a, a significant amount of overlap between HeyGov and asset management software. Significant meaning the client, the resident portion reporting. Yeah, the what is it called? Something nine one one three one one. Yeah. Uh, what what is, is what is the plan? I know that some of that is going to be in Mike's uh, presentation later on, but has there been discussion of how to uh, disentangle those two elements? Well, that would have to be filtered through the office. So when something is submitted through HeyGov, it would come in to one of us at the office, and if it's highway related, we would send it over there, and they could add it to the asset management. Or if it's highway related and people submit it through there, then it would go directly through the asset management. That's just one aspect of each service that happens to be similar. So um, the asset management would not be directly available to ordinary citizens? No, they could report. They could report, yes. But would they report it to HeyGov or the asset management. They would have a choice. I see. And however it came in, we would route it from there. Yeah. Mike? So the question for the, the response to that um, is, uh, under these modules, there's no way to remove it from one of those modules? Correct. Correct? Correct. No, thank you. Yeah. Okay, other questions so far? Seeing none. Is the, Chris is on? Chris is there. Chris? Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Well, he, we gave all the information, the presentations. Yeah. He's simply here for questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you have, uh, <coughs> anything that you need. Any questions? Okay, so go ahead. So, yeah, okay, Joe. Uh, this is going to be used for uh, property tax billing? And and uh, will the um, water bills also be yes. incorporated into this? Water is not a town. I know it's not. Right. But I think it's ideal. Um, we do. It would be up, I guess, to the select board um, because they are capable of adding um, a separate deposit account number for those payments. They would work with them directly to include them. Hmm in that program. It, did I read or see correctly that uh, people can make uh, HeyGov entries anonymously? Yes, I believe You so. did. If, yeah. if that's up to you to allow it, um, but we have customers that, that allow anonymous and customers who require, you know, a name or an email address, but that's totally up to you. We Either way is, is fine with us. That's your decision. Uh, 
How do you all feel about charging for every payment additionally, the processing fee? Well, there's a charge associated with any processing fee. It's just who pays for it. So, so right now the town pays for it. No, we actually charge no. it off as a and convenience fee. In most cases, there are certain things like the, the REC program uses Eventbrite. Right. And depending on how they um, program the specific uh, event, sometimes the town pays for it. And But I think most of the time lately they've been applying it to the end user. Yeah. And, I and most towns do that. Mm -hmm. They... Um, pass that convenience right on to the customer. And it's not just towns, there's other things. Like I've been places and I've used my credit card and they're gonna they're charging me right. that that convenience fee. And, and and what I've seen a lot of times, um, people don't mind. It's easier for them, they're gonna take care of it. Um, what this program now, I believe Chris, you can correct me, I think you're working on or you already have it in place that we can accept ACH payments, which is um, putting their checking account right in. And we are currently working on that. It's, it's not yet uh, ready, but we are currently working on that. And there's no, no fee for that transaction, correct? As far as I'm aware of, yes. Yeah. There, there would not be a fee. So somebody could just put their banking account or their checking account right information in there with no fee. And, and what do uh, passes look like? Is it all smartphone based or is there a physical Passes. Pass, uh, day pass at Crystal Beach, for example? Uh, we still have the stickers. So, for example, with the beach or we'll say the transfer station, um, I could go online and fill out my form. In order to submit it, it would have to be complete and it would be legible. <laughs> and we wouldn't have to hire two people to sit in a trailer at the transfer station um, all summer and I would submit it, make my payment, transfer station would get an email and when I showed up for my sticker they could reference my name, pull it up, click approve and hand me my sticker. So how is this going to work for my friend Jim Leamy? who doesn't use so a computer. Jim, oh, I was going to ask that question, Jim. can Jones. show up at the transfer station and pay in person. And that's fine. Is there any other way in which this is going to be a disadvantage to people who are not computer savvy? There is always the in-person option. And I don't ever see eliminating paper. What I do envision is that by empowering those people who can do these things for themselves, it actually will create a lot more time for us to devote to the people who come in, the people who want to sit down, the filing, the, the other paper stuff. We're never going to get rid of it. Um, but. There's a tremendous opportunity here to let some people self-service. And that in and of itself, that makes a meaningful impact on our workday. This is an unfair question, but I have a note to myself, waivers. Why did I write that note? I don't know, why did you? I'm just, <laughs> can you imagine why I might have written? Or beach. Because you're thorough. So whenever we have these transactions, Chris, these will be custom built. So we can embed any waivers, disclosures. Yep. If it's a beach pass, it's the alcohol yep. policy. The um, any any of the, the sailing waiver, camp sailing, waiver, sailing camp waiver, any of that. Mm -hmm. So people will have to check off on that and acknowledge that it's been read. And when they submit their payment, they're basically, you know, and actually they're signing, right, Chris? On they are. They're, uh, and Karen, thank you for doing my job for me. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> You're welcome, but, Chris. But in all seriousness, in all seriousness, yes, um, those waivers, all those forms that that we build for you, uh, we'll build them custom. We'll add whatever needs to be added. Uh, they will sign with a digital signature on their phone, with their finger, or if they're on their laptop. They can use their mouse or click on a on a pre-made signature. It's just as legal as a wet signature. So, um, yeah, that's that's really what we do. One last question. And this is for the manager. Yep. Uh, 
as I figure it, these four packages uh, require an annual uh, budget of 21,948. Have those adjustments been made to budgets for these departments going forward? The only one that's been made is for the bill paying that's in the current budget that was approved in March. The rest of them, we get a year from the time signing on, so they have to be built into the follow-on year's budgets. So the only one, just to reiterate, the only one is $5,700 for the payroll or the auto, the permitting and all that, the, the HAYGOV hey stuff. Um, the rest of the stuff has to be built back in. So I think HAYGOV costs four grand yeah. and payroll costs seventy nine twenty five, and the asset management costs 10 20, Those are the ongoing fees, yeah. Right, 1023. Yeah. So, I so the present budgets in, in, in all but one case don't reflect those additional expenses. That's correct. So the annual operating cost will be 21948 Is that what we're saying? Well, yeah. Sounds like it spread across all departments um, for payroll, which is budgeted for. Um, right? Uh, Hago is budgeted for. Okay. So you know what I'm going to ask. What? Where are you going to get the money? Just said, I, I would have to, I would spread it out amongst all of the, of the, everybody gets paid through the, every employee and, and um, volunteer, or not volunteer, um, part-time or full-time employees and refs and all that stuff, they get paid through mm -hmm. the town. So yes. that would be cost shared amongst all those departments. And then the other cost sharing would take place for those departments, transfer station, beach, town office. I'm thinking what's the other one for the uh, rec. rec for the anything it's permitting, um, those type of things. Um, and then the uh, asset management would be split out amongst all the sewer plant, transfer station, highway garage, beach, town office, public safety building, anything that all of our capital assets. So every when you look at it in that sense, the budgets for those departments aren't going to all go up ten thousand dollars. It's going to there'll be a, a percentage of that. But um, it's not in the budget for next year. No, but you, if you sign on to this right now and the money, if you give the money, it goes would be one year out. So basically, what the ladies are saying is the HayGov, the Checkmate, and the digitization of records is in the resolution or in the budget. The only thing that the, that the select board will have to um, consider is the asset management piece, the money for that. And that will be how much? Thirty-one thousand something, and that's the that includes the first year for setup and the and the well. I and guess we're getting well. If it's not if it's not in the budget, where are you, where are you getting the money? I, I'm, I'm, are we, we're not even at that point yet. So we're not. No, we're we're at, we're at Hey Gov at this point. But you're. I'm gonna. Well, I, I we're, we were gonna brief that later. Excuse me. Go ahead, Joe. I, as I understand it, the proposal is uh, a request for ARPA funds for the one-time expenditures, mm -hmm. the setup, the initial purchase, et cetera. I'm just raising the issue of ongoing expense, sure. which is 22 is, grand. Is that what you're asking? The money comes from the ARPA funds? Not for three of these. Not for HAYGOV, hey we have the money for. Checkmate, payroll, the UKG, we have the money to do the implementation, the build, and kicks in after July 1st. We have the money for that. And for the digitization, we have 16,000 of the 22. And that's billed monthly. So we just, you know, so we just measure, we, we take a measured approach. The, the money for the digitization is in the resolution or sixteen thousand dollars so I asked the board to encumber that last year so that money's sitting there you encumbered it right. the the twenty two thousand dollars that was quoted was the I definitely a probably a worst case scenario of every box and stuff that's upstairs and and the thing and all the, the parcel files for zoning our estimate is that we probably overshot that and sixteen thousand dollars would get us a long ways in digitizing all those records so that public can see stuff, get things access, and we can find it. The, what, well, I guess I'd, 
I'm not sure how to explain it to somebody that hasn't worked in the environment here of what we're dealing with of years and years of boxes and papers and trying to find things and um, and when you ask questions like how many people from Hubbard and we're like I don't know we ru we rustle through paper this is a place to capture the stuff that's cloud based well protected and encrypted and put us on a glide path to having better information and better historical records but what I guess what I'm asking is the money it seems to me we're mixing two things one is digitizing the records and the other is this program no in the resolution uh -huh. there you everything that's highlighted in that resolution has to do with automating of payroll you've already encumbered that money you've already said yes you can do it now we're just asking you to approve the vendor what I if you look at that resolution sitting at with, with the ladies today there's it costs four thousand dollars for HeyGov. If you add up the money in the resolution, it's five thousand four hundred dollars. So that means there's fourteen hundred dollars left over between the two between between HeyGov and Checkmate. That's eighty two hundred. I off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah. Um, For the first year implementation. Yeah. So yeah. so how much money do you want to take from ARPA? We're asking for the thirty-one thousand and change. Thirty-one thousand. Okay. That's in the that's in the proposal, Jim. It's in there because we have the money for the other stuff. But, but well, if you add the other stuff in, so what's the total amount? She just gave Karen gave it to you earlier. Well, if we add asset management, which is not our program right here, that's coming after the asset management and all of these. What is asset management? Thirty-one. So it's 31. 66 so something. 60, yeah, 66,000. 66, that right? But, well, yes. 66,000. But that's not, we're not asking all that for, from ARPA. Thank you. <laughs> the only thing that would I'm, be I'm having a, would be the asset management portion. I think at the last meeting, Bob raised the question, and, and I am in support of this, that the ARPA funds we're, we're primarily for infrastructure and things of that nature. We've already approved over 100,000 from ARPA funds for the library for handicap, which seems to fit into the category. I'll probably have a problem going down this road, even though I, I don't disagree with, with your proposal. But we keep nickel-diming ARPA, and that means that for other uh, projects that are out there, that money's got to be reduced. Yeah, but this program is that a fair, is that a fair assessment? Us the insight to better spend money on our infrastructure with the information that we gain. We, we, we have that? no, we have maybe there's a spreadsheet somewhere in that office with um, town assets listed on it from 10 years ago. Yep. How many we towns in Vermont have living, the breathing? How many towns in Vermont our size have this program? I don't know. Roughly but are we? But I want to clarify that. Sure, go ahead. Our three programs are separate from the ARPA, mm. from the ARPA request that will come later on. Will so come later on. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm concerned with my three programs here <laughs> that I want to get implemented. Right. So Jim, you're getting ahead. Get approval <coughs> Jim, on those. Three. One at a time, gentlemen. Go ahead, Christine. You have the floor. You finish up. I think I'm. I think I'm. Okay, Joe. Ahead. So, uh, is it Chris who's on the yes, screen? Yes. No offense, Chris, yes. but if I read correctly, uh, your uh, company through HeyGov is presently serving about 150 municipalities. Yeah. That seems we're up to 180 now. That seems very small to me. They How many in Vermont our size? And this technology. I'm sorry, there were, I'm there were multiple Chris people talking at the same time. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. I, I thought I heard a question. The question is, how many towns in Vermont our size have this program? That's not the what's, your, that's <laughs> what's your population? 44, right 100, 4,500. 44 something. 4,400. 4,400 plus, yep. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's about what I thought. Off the top of my head, I think you might be the first in Vermont, but we have many in the Northeast. So we have customers in New York, we have customers in Massachusetts, we have a couple in New Hampshire. Um, I, I can't give them to you off the top of my head right now. If you'd like a listing of them, I'd be happy to do that. But we started out in the Midwest, so we're much larger in the Midwest 
Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, that part of the world, but we are spreading out into the Northeast. Okay. Thank you, Chris. You are welcome. What else, ladies? Mr. Cole. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dick. Just I wanted to make sure for clarity that uh, at this point in time, we're specifically discussing HAGOV, Checkmate, and EasyBed Docs, and we are not discussing the asset management. That is correct. Therefore, at this point, the ARPA fund request is not relevant. Correct. Okay. But the ARPA fund is going to come up, and it will become relevant. Right, but it's not relevant for these three quarters of these four items we're discussing, the Once fourth start, one being Dave's bailiwick. Once you start down the slippery slope, you usually keep on going. My point is um, that at this point in time, they're not asking for ARPA funds for these three programs. So it's fair to say that, is it fair to say that when uh, the proposal comes up involving Ar ARPA funds that the board will give it your request serious consideration? It, these ladies are not asking silence. for ARPA We're funds. For ARPA funds. But you're going to. No. 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 Well, you're not at all. We that, are that's not. what I'm, well, who point is? I'm trying to the make. Who is? The highway department. Well, the highway department wants our performance. Well, no, DPW. DPW. So, <laughs> okay. I apologize. So the upfront costs on this particular, these three items, will be covered by the resolution that 2201. Is Funds that was that, the way I read this. Yes. They've already been agreed to and allocated, and now we have gone through the process of vetting the vendors. I understand so all that. what we're looking for is approval to go with HeyGov, Checkmate, and eBiz Docs. And you have the money for that? It's in the resolution. But we have the money in hand for that? Yes. That's what it's the resolution money, that's in the the money I'm, that's just, I'm just clarifying. If you let me clarify, Dick, I'd appreciate it. So Anything else, Mike? Does anybody have any other questions for Chris? Go ahead, uh, Mary Lee. Well, I'm not sure it's for Chris because I'm interested in the Checkmate. Okay, so we'll get to that next. So if you don't mind, Joe, are you good? Yes, I was going to ask a question about eBiz. Okay, so we'll hold on that. Dick? <laughs> I'm good for now. Jim? I'm fine for now. Okay. Of course, it's a minute oh. from now it may change. Go All ahead. All right, Chris. Go ahead. You can go I'm, on I'm mute gonna and... I'm going to stick around. If you guys have any other questions that come up, feel free to ask me. I just really am enjoying this discussion because I used to be a clerk. And I haven't been to a board meeting in a long time. So it's nice to know that even though the states are different, the issues are the same, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, is it, Chris? You're lucky. <laughs> it is, actually. It's, it's glorious to be here. So, But I'll be around. If you have any questions, I'll just mute myself. I'll be here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay, folks, where do we go from here? We're going to Casey. Casey Rollins. Are you out there, Casey? You have, you another, six, you have another six okay. minutes, ladies. Casey, is he on there? I'm looking at LCA. I'm on there. I'm there. Anybody that represents UKG on? Checkmate. Checkmate, UKG. So these are people that are on the Zoom meeting, but they're not on this screen. Okay, that's all right. Okay. So the way the so are, I'm happy that. to answer any questions about the checkmate. So the checkmate, we looked at several payroll providers. Um, we actually visited Rutland City, who uses this program. It integrates with Nimric, and they love it. So if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to answer. Go ahead. OK. I understand you went to Rutland, and they love it. Do they have any things they don't like about it? I don't remember anything she didn't like about it. Um, go ahead. There was one module that they said if we did it, they would like it because that there was something that they. It was the time management. Okay. Yeah. Um, and she said, "Oh, you're going to get the time management. I want that." I said, "Well, I don't know if we're going to get it, but I hope so." Um, they're very happy with it. Okay. Anything else on that? How long have they been using it? Two thousand and they they, they implemented it into one department in two thousand seventeen, and the, the, as a test bed, and then they, after that, they had their their beta test or whatever, and then they went full tilt. So 
Any other questions? questions? So we're faced Wonderful. with the fact that um, Melanie Coombs will be retiring, and she houses in her mind two union contracts, personnel policy, what, 15 different kinds of timesheets and all kinds of stuff. More than any one person should be required right. to have in there. 30 program. years worth of accumulated, evolved knowledge. And there is no way that we will find a person to replace her that we can dump all this on and expect them to reason it out, make sense of it, and do what she does. It's, it's an impossible feat. Um, I don't know if you all saw the nifty little, the last attachment. That's how we get our accruals, that sheet with the circles and the handwritten notes. Um, so it is the perfect time for us to step it up and get current. This is not new technology, and it's only $8,000 a year. It'll save hours each week. and reduce errors and it will train us to fill out our timesheets in a way that the parameters are built in down to the employee so if I want to take two hours of personal time and my personnel policy says it has to be half or full days it's not going to let me do it and now Melanie spends a lot of time correcting those things because we don't that there is no, there there are no boundaries on this timesheet. You can put down what you want to take, and then it gets corrected on the back end. Um, what anyway, doesn't? I'm talking too much. Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yep. there's all there's a component for the the employee too that this allows them. They can go in there, they get their password, they can change their W four, their withholding, they can put in their their vacation time and not on a piece of paper and I, I despise the situation that we're in with with uh, those the paper because I see them two weeks later so they're not vetted through me so um, through this system uh, an employee puts it in it goes the hierarchy is built of where it goes to the next so we'll go to their immediate supervisor they look at their calendars make sure that's good for the person to take off they approve it and it would go to me I approve it and then it goes to it would go to Melanie it would even send you an alert to say Karen can't have off that day because Christine is out, Melanie is out. You know, you can set those limits. Yeah. Um, or if they don't have enough time. Right. Um, so the that's I just look at the the amount of paper and the amount of stubby pencil stuff that gets done, and this empowers an employee. It it, it gives us, you know, instead of the highway department doing. Sink six minutes, six minute increments on their pay sheet. Um, you know, that because that's you if it's bargained in a union contract, we can't do much about it, but they can build it and they, they can build it. So, if someone tries to put in something that doesn't fit to that six minute increment, it won't work, or to round it to the next six minute increment. Um, just I don't know, I, I don't even know how to the pain that the, the employees feel. I can't even tr kind of share here, okay. Uh, I have I have a question, Dave. You said that uh, DPW will be looking for ARPA funds. It must be in connection with this program. No, no we're not there yet. Well, what are they saying? He said DPW. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I, when I get up, that's when I will be pitching the uh, basically the infrastructure part that I want to talk about. When? When they're done with their. People. We got one more after this one. You got the. Yeah. Okay, I, I I just got one question. Yeah, of Is, course. Am I assuming this will save yeah. a lot of employees' time? I mean, you are correct. Instead of somebody putting in twenty hours of overtime, maybe we can and, get in. And you, the see managers, what I'm saying? yes, the managers will be able to see real time accumulated hours. Right, they'll be able to manage that overtime schedule. There's nothing anybody can do about planning. Right. So that but would be the advantage of the taxpayers. Of course. Yes. Okay. Yep. Any other anything else we have to cover on this? That, that answer that. Well, do we want to talk about easy bid ducks? Yes, Jen, are you ducks? there? Or or we Come on boys, you. come on folks, let's move it on. Oh, I'm just unmuting myself. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks for hanging in to the bitter end, right? No worries. Okay. Well, this Pleasure. is Jed Tui from eBiz Docs. And Jed came out on site and we spent some time together going through our boxes, our drawers, our parcel files. He had a very professional approach um, and is the recommended provider for digitization out of Albany, right? Yes. Well, our office is in Albany. I, I happen to run out of Massachusetts, but I cover all of New England and uh, upstate New York as well. So for business development and um, representing the company in the, in the uh, public and uh, market and a, a, a couple of private firms that tend to do business with the federal government. Okay. Anything else? Joe, you had Joe? Yes. Um, what is the citizen access like? The citizen ac access is what you want it to be. So um, most of the municipalities that we deal with, the counties, well, I'll stick with municipalities. The, the state government's a little different than municipalities. Um, typically, we'll put up on a web page or they'll make access um, meeting notes conservation information, information of that nature. We did not quote doing vital records or anything like that, but when we do, when we do, uh, those would remain with the clerk, because uh, you run into certain things that you can't, that are public information, such as adoption records, uh, employee health records, uh, juvenile police records, if we get into doing police, uh, which we do a lot of police records, gun permits, case files, and juvenile records. Typically, the only person that sees that is the police chief, and perhaps if the chief designates uh, legal people. Uh, same thing with the clerk. If you want to, if you are, have been adopted and you wanted to see your original adoption records, in certain locations you have to get a court order to do that. They're not open, um, and then. The, only the clerk, or maybe if the clerk designates town legal, um, those are the people, the only people that can see those. Uh, when we are doing, we do a lot of large format map building because they have to be kept forever. Um, so those could be seen by building, zoning, ZBA, um, anybody that can wants to see them. Um, and they may or may not be accessible uh, to the general public. It depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, most people do not. I, I would assume that uh, citizens would like access to those kinds of land records. Um, Ma'am, yes. land records are already online through Nedra's office. So what we're talking about here are par parcel files, select board minutes, um, any of maps, those kinds of things, zoning uh, permits. Zoning permits. Right. Um, there was uh, meeting notes, zoning permits. Uh, there was a couple of pieces of the sewer. There was information on the on this college, on the university, yeah. um, and some of the original uh, drawings for that and permits. Um, a lot of that stuff, as I mentioned, does have to be kept forever. And what happens is it simply deteriorates and. Um, it's digit, digitization is something that um, everybody's, well, I shouldn't say everybody yet is looking at it, but it's something that's being pushed strongly by state, county, municipal. Um, and it all depends. It's your town and it's your records, documents, and, and it depends on how you want to do it. We work with you to, uh, to facilitate. Ownership is clear and own ours alone. You mean the documents? Or? Yeah, these digital files are, we control them. That's correct. What format are they in and what would happen if your company were to go out of business? Those documents, um, most people get them back in PDFs, TIFFs, something like that. Um, our company's been around for 20, 
seven years. No, we've gone in 28 years. Um, we have, well, we have an office in down in Atlanta. We have an office in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, we are, we do business as far west as Chicago, as far south as well, Alabama, Florida. Um, locally, we do, we have for years, when I say uh, 20 years, we do everything that the state of New York prints so, and, and produces. So anything the legislature puts out, we would copy that and then we have to send it in different formats to every single city and town in the state of New York. And depending on, not every city is obviously New York City or Rochester, Buffalo, or Albany. There's some extremely, um, I say this nicely, poor towns. Um, we still produce microfilm, microfiche for some of those towns that don't have computers. So we're, we are also, um, we're not, if, if we were to go, you own those documents, we provide them back. Uh, we have posted them on, we have a data center that is in a secure location because we do work for the Department of Defense that I probably, I can't discuss, but we do work for the Department of Defense. Um, and um, so uh, we, all of your records are given back to you. Um, we. We don't destroy anything. We don't uh, without your permission, no written permission. And um, the chances of us going out of business, since we're probably one of the biggest in the country that do this, is probably very slim. Um, but if you did, we would have our original documents yeah, well, and original the files anyway. that you scanned. That's correct. Right. That is correct. I guess that's my final question. Uh, what is the plan for maintenance? That is to say after this scanning project is completed, how do you folks or we uh, add to the collection and keep it current? Jed, we've talked about that the last time we talked is yeah. adding to the parcel files and such and that is possible, correct? That, that is absolutely correct. We, we have municipalities that we work with for many years and oftentimes we will do new stuff and become it's spectacularly tedious work um and I, and I say that nicely um it's it's the it, what it does is it frees up space um because a lot of that documentation can be archived some of it can be removed there are state laws that say what you have to keep forever what you have to keep for a certain amount of years and what you can keep for a few years um some of it can be archived um for lack of a better term, you know, like an Iron Mountain type place, and you put it in a in a locker, and it's there forever. The thing about it is, some of those old books, films, maps—they all deteriorate over time. Um, and if you don't keep a record of it, some of the stuff that you're supposed to keep forever, like vital records, uh, like buildings, um, maps, and, and and permits, and things like that, um, inspection certificates. Um, if, if you lose them, it can be a big problem. Or oh, if they if they're burned, if they're wet, if they're ruined, uh, that can all that can be a big problem. And we've seen it. So, um, so to, yes, well, my long-winded answer is yes. You can yes it can be added to. Um, yes, we work with towns on an ongoing basis, and adding to it as as the one thing is uh, you folks folks know, um, you generate more paper every year. And um, it, it never goes away. It's never going to go away. So, um, will this include our town reports forever? Yeah, we can scan those too. Yes, we we do a lot of those as well. Yeah. We did not talk about that, but we do. We do. Um, no, and the, we, uh, this is all searchable. No yes. Yes. The question was: Is it's all searchable, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Mary Lee, you have Mary a question? Lee? I think I know the answer, but John Q. Public wants to know what you're doing on the sewer system for Parson Hill or somewhere. Can John Public access these records and see what's going on as far as that? As long as, as they're digitized, 
should be able to reference either the sewer project number or um, say Parsons Hill. So right? how would I yes. get a password or something to do that? You or don't need one. They're just, just wide open. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Thank we you. hope to Thank have you. a little station where the lister cards are, where people can come in and use HeyGov or search for documents or, you know, empower people to come in and do some of these searches themselves. Yep. Yes, it's Yes, Mr. Manager. Yes. Jim, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so this does not include the clerk's records as was stated earlier. Um, NEDRA has her own budget for that and has been slowly getting those digitized. So this is not stuff that's in her vault, or land records and stuff. This, so just to be reiterated, that's not right. her stuff. That's correct. That's my understanding. But she's got feet of town reports. It does include those. We can inc we'll include that in there. But as yep. far as her land records go, she has her own budget and she wants to deal with that on her own. Okay. Any other questions for Jed? Any other questions for anyone? It'll be so nice to get all that paper into something that we can search and actually use. Just a quick one, Jim. I think this has been answered, but this is, would be available not just in the office, but at, I can search this stuff at my house. From your phone, whatever. That's what yep. I guess. It's in the cloud. Yep. Okay. And the money is, from what I'm looking at here, the money is coming from an anticipated surplus. Is that correct? Last year. Yeah. That's this? Last, last year's surplus. Yeah. An yeah. And what happens if, if it's not assigned? What happens to it then? It's already been assigned. Goes for where? I think you've already that, assigned. That is, not, that is not the surplus. That, that, that is the, sur the $227,000 surplus that you were, the board was given as a, a figure. That's already been taken. That's the 227 is after that resolution is done. So this, the, two the 227 thousand dollar surplus that the board received in, from the financial audit shows that is after that's paid after all this stuff in the resolution is done. So you still have a you still have a 220 thousand 27 thousand dollar surplus that will go to pay down the tax rate if that's if that's the case. Right, yeah. and it's figured in in the calculations for that. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much, ladies. Excellent presentation. I do have a question. Thank you. Why did you? Why did you? Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for the town manager. So we don't need. Thank you very much, but you're off the hook. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this motion here that the, they're suggesting we make about amending the resolution is it legal to do that? This resolution was. Passed last July or June, I believe. Right. So you're not changing. I guess the, the answer is I, I. We asked that question today. I said, is it? Is that? Does that make it legal? I don't know that question. Um, if you don't do anything, I'm going to still move forward and do that. I'm just trying to make it up and up. That the four, the four thousand dollars for Hey Gov, we have it there. That that one one. Well, in here though, if you look at the resolution, it says for payroll, automated payroll system, what we're adding in yellow, I don't have mine in front of me right now, in yellow, um, it says an updated payment processing system. Because, and ladies, correct me if I'm wrong, with HeyGov, if we don't do this by May, they've given us a three... Th March 31st. So what, commit to it? May. May. Yes. There's a $3,000 charge that we won't get, we won't have if we do it by May 31st. If we do it after that, the th they're going to not waive that $3,000 setup fee here. So that's why there's a, a push to say the resolution is backwards. Because when we wrote the resolution, we didn't know about this. So if you change that and add it in there, we'll be able to use that money that's in the resolution to get Hey Gov going. Because they said, Hey Gov said, uh, I believe that depending on what we want to start with this some of this stuff they can have it up and running in two weeks okay which Mike. is critical when the beach opens memorial day weekend so thank you. okay anything else on this so just the is the, there a reason we can't make a motion for these three modules at this point 
No? No? The one thing you want. The, the issue is that Mr. Combs is asking about is can we retroactively uh, allocate the unassigned general funds? Well, you're not changing the amount, I think, just changing some words, right? That's correct. My understanding is these funds already exist. It's, it's an existing surplus that has been audited. It's been set aside as money that Melanie's put and inside two, to $296,000. $267,000 surpluses after these funds have been allocated? Uh, the answer is yes, but it was 227 not Okay, I'm sorry if okay. I had the wrong number. Um, right, so the only it. question I have is can we legally add these words to this resolution? You can try, see what happens. Sure. It's all the same board members. It's not changing the amount. It's not changing the date you have to use it by. It's adding like five words to it. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't I don't see have a straight face tell you it's legal, but I don't have an ethical problem with it. I just wanted to make sure it's legal. <laughs> I think it's totally ethical to do this, and it's ultimately going to benefit the town and the town staff. But uh, I just want to make sure what we do is okay to do. So you're going to check on this with legal counsel, or like, see if we can do it, or if that's the route you want to go, might be a good idea. Dick has questioned it, so what's it might your be a good idea? idea. You don't, do you really want my opinion? Yes. I, I'd say that you made the document, the same people are there, you, you're just amending the resolution, so the same people are doing it, being clear on what it says and redating an, as an amendment, I don't think there's a legal issue with it. it. Didn't go before the legislature, it's just it stayed here. Why aren't we doing this right now? Uh, I'm, I'm done asking questions, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's just get it done. I'd like to make motion that we do Haygov, Chetmank, and eBiz stocks um, at this time. And the money will come from where? It's already. We've got that. It's We've gone. got that money? Correct. Okay. I'll second that. You second. Any discussion on that? Um, I'd like to add to your motion, Mary Lee, that we authorize the town manager to sign those contracts for Haygov. You. KG checkmate and ease bid docs. Are you agreeable to that, Mary? Agreeable to that. Okay. I'll second that too. In a second. Okay. C can I, sure, Joe, ask uh, do we also need to approve the amended version of resolution 2201 in the process? I think so, but I think that should be a separate motion. Okay. You're the parliamentarian, Joe. What do you think? <laughs> I, I defer to my senior colleague a second. Okay. <laughs> Good move. Good move. <laughs> okay. Uh, ready for the motion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Motion passes. Okay. All right. I'm going to make a motion to amend resolution 22-01 to include online and forms payment processing in addition to automated payroll and HR system with the funds to be used by June 30th, 2023. Second. Discussion of that. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, that takes care of that part of it. Um, Mr. Chairman, on the back of there's we didn't there's a place to sign on those on the resolution. I'm afraid so, yes. yes. So when, when it comes that time. So that was the easy part. What are you doing now? You got right. it right here. That was the easy part. You can't find it. Yeah. You can't find it. Yeah. It's got yellow, yellow stuff on it. Mm -hmm. All right. I got that someplace here. Right there, right? That? Sex version of mine. That's mine. Don't touch it. I saw you. I know. Done with that one. Here you go. I'm done with that one. I do that at home too. They don't like it. Now, do we also have to take this part up? Yes. ARPA funds requested $31,323. Yes. That's DPW. That would be me. Can you bring Ryan up, please? Paperwork. Oh, yes, I got that. Good job. Thank you. Hey, Ryan, you on? Ryan Burns, are you uh, on here? Thank you. Yeah, I'm on. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I had that. I've got my colleague Chris here with me as well to back me up with any technical questions that might come up. So, thank you. Mm. So, first of all, I want to. Are you waiting for a minute for Dick? Or? 
He's right. He, he's uh, okay. He's he'll go ahead. He'll be right around. <laughs> I need to he's making the circle there. So, um, what we're doing is we're presenting a program to a company called Brightly um, out of the South. And myself and the road foreman sat down uh, and looked at this ad nauseum, as well as the town manager and Karen has also sat in on this. There are certain parts of this that I, actually most of this I found very intriguing. I think this is gonna be helpful for the uh, town. And I do believe that, Dick, that this would save us money in the long run. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was capital assets. Capital assets being the buildings, major end items being large vehicles, things like that, where they would come do an assessment on every building that we have that the town owns. We're looking at 20 years longevity about, and these gentlemen will correct me after I'm done speaking, but my understanding is, is that we're gonna look at it in capital looking at it from a strategic standpoint, looking at capital investments down the road. So what we'll be able to do is know that 10 years from now, I'm just using this as an example, that we know that the fire department is gonna need a bunch of work done on it. So we can start saving now for the future, uh, opposed to like what I've kind of been dealing with lately at the highway department and other parts in the DPW. I feel like I, I'm, I, you know, pull my gun from my hip all the time and trying to put out little fires. What I'd like to see is um, some thoughtful budgeting, and I think that this will help us do that. Um, other parts of this program that I think are really great are the citizen part of this, where they can also go into a website and they could basically do a work order. Say, hey, I got it. They can take a picture of a pothole in front of their house. Instead of calling uh, somebody up at the main office, we can pull it up right off of our computer. There's a picture of the pothole. Yep, that's a pothole. And we can actually, you know, put a time stamp on it. When we may be able to get out there and do it or give them a phone call, you know, we will get out to you, but right now that is not our main priority, but we are aware that that is there. And then another thing is infrastructure tracking. Um, just continually tracking our infrastructure, knowing where it's at. Perfect example tonight. I had no clue until somebody told me that perhaps the sewer plant is going to someday have an issue. You know, so now we're, again, drawing from the hip and we're getting engineers involved in everything, trying to get us to understand the complexity of what we're going to have to deal with in the future and what money it may end up costing us in the future. So when I look at this as, yeah, there may not be a cost saving today, but down the road there's going to be a cost savings. Brian, do you have anything you want to add? It was pretty well <clears throat> said, David. I think um, the one thing I would add to this is the uh, the preventative maintenance component, yep. um, specific to the facility condition assessment that we'll provide. We'll also be creating a uh, preventative maintenance program, um, so that's going to automate all that routine maintenance that the town has to get done on the town assets um, to extend the life of those assets, making sure those aren't missed. I think that's a, a big piece when you're talking about return on investment. Okay, questions? Well, I was going to ask that on the preventive maintenance. I'm a firm fan of having things operational ready, or as, or as uh, Brent knows the term I like to use. Um, so as far as that, if it's time to change the oil on the one-ton dump truck, it gets changed and somebody's accountable for that? Yes, absolutely. And um, So if it doesn't happen, your road foreman would know that and be able to make sure it does happen yeah. or you so or whoever's either, responsible well it's not just going to be brent looking at it. it's going to be myself looking at it and then whoever we're not necessarily going to hire a town mechanic but we'll have somebody involved with the maintenance side of the house on some levels it's going to be ryan chalmers if he Ch chalmers if he decides to take that position down the road if it's offered um, but it will be more than one person looking at that so it could be something like brake cans or uh, also management of that. Now, they wouldn't be setting that up, but that would be something that we would be setting up, is looking at more of the material type stuff 
And correct me if I'm wrong, that is in there, that program, correct, Ryan, where we can go in and do more minutia stuff? Like uh, oil, oils, uh, ordering, that kind of stuff? Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that would be on us, not on them. But we would do an inventory of our of our fuels, of our tools, of all of the, uh, the, the preventative maintenance pieces that we keep on hand. So if we know, okay, We've used, uh, we usually keep two or three uh, air, you know, brake cans on stock. Uh, as soon as we've gotten down, maybe then Brent knows it's time to order new uh, uh, brake cans or something like that. So this would also give you the ability to forecast needs, like Absolutely. when you need to change carbides on, on your plow blades and new chains for the trucks, et cetera, yes. et cetera, <laughs> ongoing, all the stuff that comes up that, oh crap, we need to order the. <clears throat> and it would send it would you could you could set it up to set an alert so that if you if you drop to X you know, you say I want to have a shelf stock of five and you use two it'll say oh time to, you're down below five order two more or let you know that so you, it's not like trying to remember everything so the the setup on this I saw this somewhere here was twenty thousand and change uh, I think it was thirty one thousand yes no that's a total investment yeah total oh. investment. the setup was 20 and then it was 10,000 a year after yeah. that and then 10,000 um, so I guess my question is um, what does the twenty thousand dollars get us how much do you have to do how much do they do Sounds that's like the first part the so we ask the two-part question and then you can go yeah. on sorry and then after that the ten thousand a year what does that get us from them okay. So the $21,000, and again, Ryan, jump in if I'm uh, misquoting, but they're going to come out here and do an actual inventory. Um, they're going to send people out here. They're going to look at all of our infrastructure, our capital assets. They're going to barcode them. Um, and then that gives us a baseline to work from. We know that where we are with each piece of capital asset. So some of the stuff may be like, oh boy, we're still drawn from the hip. But there's other capital assets like the town office, uh, the fire station uh, that are brand new. So this is where we could start planning that in the future what we need to do budgetary wise to be able to hopefully have that money available so we're not taking out a huge loan, paying interest, those types of things where we actually have some of that money on hand. For a follow-up question, the, the sure. vendor is going to be doing, they're going to be doing all the grunt work, they're going to um, build the database, they're going to write the code, they're doing all that. That's my that understanding, Ryan. Right? Town staff doesn't have to do that, any of that work? That is correct. Yeah, the, the professional services that he's talking about, the facility condition assessment, our team will do all that. We will also work with, with David and his team to implement the software. So we're going we're gonna to configure and customize it based on his goals, his needs, his operations. Um, so it is working with you guys to do that, but we're doing the heavy lifting of actually implementing or building the system out. So you're going to build the database and all the spreadsheets are reporting, all the forms, et cetera, are all going to be done by you? Correct. Okay. Uh, so just on another note too, we're going to be able to map out infrastructure too. So again, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but my understanding is, is that roads, uh, sewer lines, where they are currently at, pump stations, those things, working with him, we'll be able to identify all of these things on a map. So when Dave Fabricius is retired and is working for his wife in a couple of years, whoever replaces me or replaces Brent or replaces Mike or anybody, we still have that, that historical data that I haven't had access to other than uh, these pirate maps, that, that's what I call them, because that's what they, they're about ready to fall apart. So I did find some, uh, um, I did find some, uh, the old SOAR maps, I actually found a thumb drive with them. They're all TIFF files, they're not named or anything, but it's a start. But these guys can help me with a lot of this stuff to be able to identify the things in the town that nobody's been able to do up to this point. And will that give us some things like the infrastructure database that will be able to differentiate between what we know and what we think? I want it to be what we know, not what we think. Well, there's always some think there's going to be some gray areas where we don't know. But and yeah, we'll I, be able to differentiate between that because, as you well know, it's important when you're assuming to watch that you know what we know and you know what we think. Right. Right. I, 
I personally, I'm not a person, I'm a black and white person. I'm not a gray area guy a lot of the times. Um, if I don't know, I, I don't write it down. To me, that's not fair to you or to the taxpayer. Where I'm going with this is we may be able to identify the gray areas and then eventually try to get rid of that's some of them. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I get it. I'm done now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Question, Marilyn? I have just one question. Once you've got everything inventory with your little barcode, mm -hmm. from there on, if you buy a <coughs> new chainsaw, you That's, barcode it yourself? Well, I don't think we're looking at barcoding all of all. We're talking major inventories. We're talking uh, capital investments, trucks, uh, oh, okay. uh, motors, things like that. I, I don't know. Do we have the option to do that? Ryan. To inventory parts, yeah, like change yeah. smaller assets. Yeah. You you have the ability to go in and print a barcode for any asset or piece of equipment that you want. Okay, perfect. Uh, the assets that we are going to barcode are going to be related to major facilities assets. Yeah, I, honestly, I like the idea of what Mary said though. Is if that's something we can do ourselves. Because uh, when I was in the military, one of the things we did is go from a non-barcode to basically a Walmart version of the military. It actually worked significantly better from my perspective once we figured it out. Because now I knew if, you know, I've got four chainsaws, I still have four chainsaws. And that they're the ones that we initially purchased. So Dave, are you asking the board to consider this when we have our special meeting? on our funds is that basically what I'm hearing yeah absolutely okay. because right. I, honestly um, Jim I do think that there is a real cost savings on this okay particularly if you're looking at it from a strategic point of view you know I may be dead and gone by the time the town is saving a ton of money but um, I think somebody is going to actually benefit from okay. this and it's going to be the town good enough all right let's wait a minute yeah. Joel's got a question uh, two uh, th this is uh, Really following up on Mary Lee's question, so in addition to uh, keeping up the inventory with re any respect to any equipment purchases or equipment losses, I uh, assume the same goes for the rest of our uh, assets. Uh, highways, any paving would be uh, adjusted, and any changes in paving would, would be reflected in the inventory that we're going to be handed yes someday. absolutely um, and, and we've got to start on that right now uh, Brent and I and actually Mike too we sat down and put our heads together so we kind of know where we're at right now but in the future it'll go right into this program that we have and we'll be able never again will we have to you know look at you know talk to people from 20 years ago, remembered when North Street got paved down on the on the 30, you know, the, the Route 30 side or whatever. I mean, it literally came down to that because we had not a lot of historical data going back that far. Second question, Dave. Um, looking at this, I'll call it an inventory, asset inventory that uh, Brightly Asset Management would perform. Um, there's a lot of room for variation in estimates. I mean, I think the most recent example is the estimates we've received about the cost of replacing the roof on the village school. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the original uh, consultant whom we hired came in with a figure north of $400,000, and Jake Helm came back with 125 to 150 thousand, that's a huge variation in the estimates provided by professionals. Um, we have to be able to trust Brightly's numbers mm -hmm. because if we start building a replacement plan and a financing model based on the 400 thousand dollar figure, we're going to be wasting citizens' resources, in my opinion. I completely understand. So how, how, how are we, the board, to uh, have confidence that the Brightly number is going to be the right number? I think I can answer it, but I'm going to let Ryan answer that first. Did you hear that? 
Yeah, I did. Um, and I want maybe Chris to jump in here too, maybe Chris about the, the methodology and, and what they're using to base some of those replacement costs on. Yeah, well, I think let's talk some about who would be performing the service, right? Because the boots on the ground with our engineering partners are, are where really the question's about. Um, so any details from that scope that you have, Ryan, I think would be beneficial for and who are who would we have here assigned with it? Oh, Alpha facilities. Yeah, yeah. So any details on that, I think, would, would probably help. Yeah. Yeah, I can provide some information about the firm we work with that specializes in providing these assessments. <clears throat> okay. I, I, to follow up on that, I guess what would be uh, particularly meaningful would be to have references uh, to um, call who have had experience actually working on projects that were estimated by your engineers. Is that something you could provide to us uh, in a timely manner? Absolutely. Day? Absolutely, I can. Yep. Great. Yeah, I can get those over to you as early as tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it, Brian. Okay, Absolutely. one more question. Dick? One quick question, Dave. What's your time frame look like on this? How soon would you like to act? I realize you, of course, would have liked to have acted six months ago, but. Yeah, I would have, but um, honestly, I'd love to have this activated and starting in the wintertime particularly when we start moving into, uh, you know, large purchases of salt and things like that, being able to manage those inventories. Um, I think that's when we see a lot of the issues going on with vehicles and things like that, in regards to preventative maintenance side that you were talking about. So I think late fall would be a good time. I would love to see this implemented. So if, if, this, if this board made a decision in the next 30 to 90 days, that would be adequate? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Right. A question for the, for the contractor is um, the quote that you gave us, if you if it's 30 or 60 or 90 days away, does that change the quote? Good point. Uh, that will not change the quote. Okay. Uh, well, it's going to change the subscription terms as far as the number of months of software you're going to have access to. So it's I can I can take a look at that, but it's it's not going to change anything else for the contract. Okay. Just going to affect the start date of so potentially reducing the number of months that you all are accessing the software. Right. And from my last comment for for this whole thing is. One, one of the things that we struggle with both, and it's, so it's outside of, uh, of the highway department or outside of public works, is managing grant paperwork and uh, all the data that go that was required by the, uh, the administrators of these grants. This program, because it has uh, the ability to sign work orders we, or job orders, we can build these for, for our accountant that gives it a name, and then every time they do work on it, it gets put into the system like these three people worked how many like, all their all their wage information we built in there all the fema rates will be built in there so that when we use a truck it'll tell us how much it costs for that day or how much it costs for those individuals uh, or we bought materials and we put that in there so at the end of these processes which sometimes can take nine months or so to complete instead of melanie having to look through paper pay records with highlighted information that says this person worked on this grant. It's very mind-numbingly um, tedious and time-consuming. This could start from the very beginning and just streamline that that whole process. As long as it's garbage in, garbage out, I guess, so if we don't put the stuff in there correctly, it won't reflect the accuracy of it, but <coughs> I don't think that really is an issue. Um, and then the inventory management, I think the only department in this town that submits their inventory their property inventory is is rec martha does it every year faithfully and because the rest of the departments have no damn idea what they what they have that's not i'm not putting i'm not crapping anybody i'm just saying to, you start looking at every nook and cranny and say we have this chainsaw and then we have oh we have a broken one over here but we still have it and now you can assign a maintenance status to it like it's it's broken and it needs to be repaired or how much is it going to cost to repair it these are things that we can use for budgeting purposes and we find out what we have truly what we have and go we don't need that it's broken we can get rid of it um, you know follow our purchasing policy that kind of stuff 
Um, and the underground infrastructure, um, there's GIS data that can go with this, but in the, in the, if we lack that data, um, you can build it in there on these maps, and, and I really wanted to show you this stuff, but it would take a lot more time, on how this works, and it would show us, say, the Route 30 sewer line. It would, in that, you click on that, and it would show, it was, it's, it was installed in 2021, its current status, you know, that kind of stuff, and we start building our, when this would have to be replaced, but most of the stuff, our roads, our buildings, and our big, big purchases, um, big items, we have, we don't have the data on. And this gives us a place to start and actually manage the stuff better for the taxpayers so they're not wasting money buying that chainsaw that no one knew was upstairs, um, been sitting behind a, a shelf for 10 years. Okay, Mike, anything else that take care of this? No, so we'll we'll bring it up at the uh, special meeting on the use of ARPA funds. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Thank, Ryan. You, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Police update. Sorry I had to wait so long, Peter. Sorry, this will be easy. easy. <laughs> uh, good evening. You got the, did you all get the copy of the, the report? I know Justin didn't get it done this weekend. Uh, I dropped it off today. <clears throat> Just a couple things. Uh, Actually, February, uh, it was actually, I wouldn't say it was quiet, but our, call were, our calls were down by 142. If you look through there, what we did, um, why, I don't know. Um, same with the rest, we're down. From actually only had four in February, previous month we had nine. Uh, the tickets, we're down a little bit, um, this February was down in a lot of areas, uh, maybe people, I don't, I don't know, I haven't, there's really nothing I can kind of gear towards. Any questions on the, the calls, the service calls? Okay, calls the service university. Uh, stayed the same, you know, February, uh, we had three, January had four. Uh, backup provided by CPD, five from uh, January was seven, February was five. Um, if you read through the notes that Justin and I put in there, you'll see some kind of, some of the explanations. Um, Property checks, you know, reminded to contact us. Business, you know, we continue to do those. Uh, we did have some uh, um, some complaints on some of the roads. We have done, let's see, nine. We've done 14 direct patrols on Drake Road um, since uh, we received a complaint that they were speeding on it, and uh, several of the stops were residents of the road. So they felt embarrassed, but that's what we were there for. Uh, in reference to the bus stops in the afternoon, uh, we've seen no violations. We're probably doing it three times a week, not every single day. Um, I've talked to the bus drivers, and the bus drivers are always good. If, if people are blowing those red lights, I'm telling you, they call us. That are going through the district and they have a right of statement and they give it to us with a plate number and such. So um, we haven't uh, seen any violations. Uh, just for an update, so uh, I know that <clears throat> you knew that we were due working on a grant through ARP. Uh, PD did get it done from Cedar Rack. Uh, it was due March 15th. We had everything all set, so that was sent in don't know what the status of that is at this point. Um, also, thank you for um, for the cruiser. Got the cruiser, it's all outfitted. We did sell the 15, we're very happy with it. Um, so that's all finished. And I only have one other, any questions on what I've covered so far? And I just have one other item I, I want you to cover. It's real short, yes. yes Two I questions, a new, uh, new cruisers in service? Yes. Excellent. Um, second question, when you're providing backup to 
Fulton. Specifically, we'll talk about Fulton first. Yeah. Um, are you backing up another officer that just needs help? Yeah, that's state police. Anything outside of Fairhaven would be state police. Well, my second question is, when you provide backup to Fairhaven, are you backing up another officer or just responding to a call that they were not able no, to? No, just backup. That's just backup. Okay. Yeah. So calls to, to adjacent towns when their PD is not on duty is a separate issue? Correct. Some, sometime I would like to see, and it doesn't have to be tonight, an accounting of that. Yeah, that that's going to be difficult. I know that when we switched to Velcor over a year ago, we were able to see that. Where it's Pillman, we did. We, if, if, if you remember the reports that he gave years ago, we had two separate what was backup and what we covered for calls. So that's something that uh, Justin and I had talked about. Um, I know I talked with Chief Humphreys and he's had the shifts covered because somehow it came back to me because Mike went to, did you go to the town manager? No, it was, a, it was an open, open meeting. Yeah, it was an open meeting. So he had actually, he had actually called the town manager and then, then asked him about why we brought that up. And since I've been here, I've always been a person that Castle and taxpayers pay us to do policing here. That's what I was talking about early in my career, so that kind of changed things, which then uh, we just try to stay on top of that. Well, why I'm asking the question, uh, since I brought it up, I, the recent article in the Rutland Herald where one of our officers responded to a domestic in Fairhaven at 9.43 or something like that p.m. on a Wednesday, does that mean that because there was no Fairhaven cop is what it said is, no, no, is what it said in the paper. Now that may or may not be correct. No, I didn't read that, but I, I can check that. I'm pretty sure that any time where they've got to go there, they know that if they respond, that they don't go there first unless it's a life threatening situation. Well, this there was a firearm discharge, so that yeah. Might have been well, that was um, no. I know there was an officer. If it's in reference to that one, there was a Fairhaven officer. Yes, on there was. In that, that was case. last week, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So in, in yes. that case, I'm yes. done talking about it. Okay. okay thank yes. you, Pete. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do have the contract for the Slate Valley Union uh, School that they signed it for next year. So all I need is you guys take a look at it, have the chair sign it. There's two copies. I just need a copy, and you guys can keep my copy for your records. So I'll just kind of pass this around. We've already agreed it's the same amount of last year, and that covers. Uh, four hours a day for five days. How soon do you need that back? Um, I'd like to get it signed tonight so I can get it back for it's You want to keep your copy? Or we'll just no, no, you, he's got to sign both of them. I gotta he's got to sign both of them. All right. Okay. I was hoping to have them. Is there a motion to, to sign? Yeah, no, you guys, you guys are to keep one. I'm just going to take one. Okay. That's okay. okay. Is there a motion to sign a contract? Town of Castle and Slate Valley Union School District, as presented by the chief. In the amount of? In the amount of $55,902. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there discussion? If not, all those in favor Whoop. indicate. Whoops, whoop, whoop, I'm sorry. Yes, Mike. The, in that contract, it does state that they're paying 100% of the cost, right? Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's so if anybody had a question, we're, they're paying our the health care, the benefit, mileage. yeah, everything. So there's no out of pocket cost. You did say it was the same terms as last year. So it's, it's the same contract. You want to just cover what schools it covers? Yeah, call we it cover C E S, Benson, and Orwell. And then you actually have a sword on the hand. Which is Castle on Montana. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes, Chief. Thank you. Here. Any other questions about anything um, yes. police related? Yes, Mary Lee. I notice, well, I have to clean my car off and I'm very short. I have a hard time getting the stone off. How come the school buses don't have to clean the top of their car? Well, they should. They should. They don't. Trucks should do too. The track and trailer is supposed to do all sorts of things. So is that something that they keep an eye on it. I mean, I have not seen a lot of snow on the buses, and I'm usually here in the morning, so I usually actually do the bus route. I usually go up on uh, North Road, watch the bus there, go on Route 30, because they're notorious for cars supposedly going by the buses, but I sit up there, I'll sit, uh, I forget, I think it's 3086, 
uh, on uh, Route 30. So, but I will keep, I'll take notice. Well, I'll take in, note of that. in fairness, it was after that. Big storm. Big storm. Yeah. They're supposed to. And Same with trucks. I was just thinking, well, I've had snow come down over my windshield before. Yeah. What if it came down over a bus? Yeah. No, I, I totally understand, yes. Any other questions from Chief? Let's yeah. hope the buses don't break as fast as you do, Mary Lee. They're <laughs> 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 all as fast as you do. Yes, Bob. The new police cruiser, what does it have for lettering it aside? Does Same it? as the other ones. Same as the other ones. Same exact thing, and nothing's changed. Okay. Mitchell said it. So Thank you, Chief. Here's your copy. Thank you. Yeah, so I, and I, you know, I know that you all want the marks, but I keep it as minimal as possible as long as you can see that it's identifiable. Okay. Any other questions? Sorry to keep you all. That's all right. This was fun. Actually, I learned quite a bit tonight. Yeah. Oh, can I have some ARPA money? <laughs> <laughs> That's the call. You had to vote. Uh, I had to vote. Okay. Moving on to lease loan documents for approval. 2023 Caterpillar loader backhoe. Tell manager. Right. So this is the official version of the contract for that loan um i was asked by by the treasurer why it took so long and the answer i have was i don't know why did it take so long um the answer i think is because the treasurer was out of town in florida for a while um but i don't know i don't know what it is but i mean there's nothing that we held up that i know of on our end um but from the time that we had asked for the loan to the time we received this paperwork it seems to me that the interest rate increased yeah and so uh, i mean obviously they kept saying interest rates are going to go up they're going to go up and so i don't know at this point whether or not it was something that we did that, that caused the delay or something uh outside of our control but um as far as my perspective goes i i'm not aware of anything that we did um myself i say we i'm talking myself and karen um to slow this thing down so I, but that that was my that was my uh observation was the interest rate went from like four some four point two five percent or something like that to five point four nine percent so is there a is that it mike uh yes is there a motion to approve the document as presented I'll well, I don't know. Go ahead. I'll make the motion to uh, approve the document as presented. Is there a second? Just wondering if we should include in the motion um, the amount, yes. the interest rate, and the uh, lender. That would be that would be required. Uh, yeah. Preferred. Yes. Why don't you uh, Why don't you just withdraw it and do it again, Mary Lee? Okay. Be the easy way to do it. I'll try again. I make a motion that we do the capital equipment note in the amount of thirty-five thousand uh, dollars at the rate of five point four nine percent per annum and in seven annual principal payments of five thousand dollars each did i miss anything the bank no april 3rd april 3rd yep. for, for the caterpillar loader right okay in the bank mat bank oh an mat bank Is i'll there, second that have a second any discussion not nah, all those in favor indicate by saying aye uh, aye, aye. aye. Motion passes. Let's go. We'll go this way. How's that, Dick? I need to get up again. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <coughs> Allison, did you get the? How many signatures? Who made the motion and seconded? One. Everybody gets the second. Oh. Um, I didn't check. Okay, thanks. Mary Lee, it's a motion. Yep. Correct. 
Was it Dick or Bob that seconded? I Dick, did. Dick seconded. Dick did. Dick did. Yeah. So That's what I had. I think each of these tabs has a signature required. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Allison. No, it's Melanie. Melanie. Th this is this is Melanie, town accountant. Just um, yes, Melanie. Uh, as as an FYI reminder, on those loan documents, there are several places for various people to sign. Yes. So if the select board would sign all those pages that are indicated uh, by each member, and then the treasurer will take care of uh, her section, and Nedra will sign off. Uh, on hers as clerk. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Melanie. Otherwise, you'll have to come into the office tomorrow. <laughs> Three places, Joe. Thank you. Nicely color coded, so we have to sign the pinks. Does anybody know why this has this slot here? There was something else in there at one point that slid, it was a picture that slid in and out of there. A picture or a poster? Yeah. What, yeah. what kind of picture or poster? I it's like a flowery picture. Yeah, there was yeah. a flowery picture. Yeah. Huh. So Karen took it out and put the sticker in there. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine if another group, you know, would reserve Pink this or purple. Oh. Pink, they told me. Okay. Well, there's three plots. Oh, have the right size page. picture, poster, or There's no pink logo. Yeah. Card off. That they I'm telling you, that's what we're supposed to sign. That's there's working. no pink spot. I don't care. You're supposed to sign that. <laughs> I will talk to you like that. I'll slap you. I know you will. <laughs> Pay the price, right? I got an extra, dare you. extra sticky here. I don't know where it came from. That, that's probably the one that's missing. I think you're probably right. So yeah, what are those no schematics on the whiteboard over there? So yeah. Okay, good. That's good. It was um, just a talking about size up of a building. So A, B, C, D. I see. To reference that. Uh, I think it, what that is, it's Gilmore's. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You can see the outbuildings. That is Gilmore's. It's probably their after action review. That was the after action review. Yeah. Interesting. Get that back, Jim. Sure. What went right? What did? Thanks. What could we do better? Mm -hmm. so aside from you pulling on that sharp nail or whatever it was. Could have been a rock, I don't know. It was Things went pretty well. Okay, can we move on to um, Castle and Recreation request for time on the agenda, discussion, slash CVS, Martha? Martha Clifford, Castle and Rec. Uh, do you want to do the tulip first, or do you want to do the, the other piece? Whatever you want to do, Martha. Um, okay, so I, I think that what I'm looking for is just that you agree that we are we're okay down there with, with what we do. Um, it, is, it is not in an abidance with the alcohol policy, um, but it's going to be one thing that's incredibly hard to enforce. Um, so I don't know where, you, where as a board you want to go on that. Can I ask a question? Sure. What are you doing at this point in time? What's, what's common practice there, not what the company policy is, so to speak, okay, what's so, common practice? Um, there's, we, we do enforce the no glass on the beach, uh, whether it's got alcohol in it or not. 
Um, and then the when they rent the pavilion, um, there is a you know a rental form that I've attached that has this the tulip website, and it is strongly suggested that um, that they uh, that they purchase a rider a rider who policy. Sure. But they're also they it would be probably covered under most uh, homeowners for for them because it's that's what I read at, at some point whether it was here or in there and um, basically I, I tell them they, they typically ask you know they see that there's a, a, a no alcohol policy I tell them that I strongly suggest they get a writer um, for liability and um, and then I say that if if there's you know alcohol used and it becomes an issue, then we usually call the police and have them removed from the park. Is this the same policy we've had in the past? Yes. Same policy. This came on uh, when Mark Shea was here. Okay. You need our approval on it. Uh, I just. Covering basis, you know. You need a, a motion to yeah. Mike, Yeah, I was talking with Karen about this too, uh, and and Wade Masira. But I think when if we go with HayGov is what the board approved that reservations for facilities can be done online through that, mm -hmm. and all these policies can either be a link or something they have to read and check off that they read it and they comply with it. So we can talk about this more, I guess that mm -hmm. that. that now that we're going to get hake of that yeah. this i think this will solve some of it because they're usually they don't make reservations the same day right so most yeah, of, most yeah. so <laughs> all right so just so i'm clear on this the person that rents the facility martha it would go on their homeowner's policy if something happened well, up there is if that if it wasn't I, here that i read it it was when i went onto the website for tulip uh to research on tulip that um that it said that most most homeowners would cover would cover that particular incident. If they were but it's a homeowner's policy of the person that rents the mm -hmm. facility. Yes. Okay. And you said most. Well, if you, not, if you don't have, have, have if, the you, rider, if you don't have them? a if you don't have a homeowner's, then it's not going to be covered. Or if you your homeowner's is is not um, a, like a decent homeowner's policy. You know, I, I think Wade at, at one point said that, you know, that he was concerned about, I don't know if he mentioned this to you, Mike, but he did in the past when I talked to him, something about third party injuries. Mm. Um, and, you know, that's what's his only issue with this. Okay. Question, Joe? I, I guess, Martha, the concern that I have is that um, the what is it fourth sentence here mm -hmm. seems to imply that we are aware that people are vi violating our no alcohol policy the town of Castleton has a no alcohol policy for all its public lands it is strongly suggested that you secure an insurance writer to protect you from liability if alcohol is provided at your gathering. And um, I, I'd be interested in, in what VLCT thinks of that language, which um, I fear could expose us to risk. Anything that goes on with this? Mr. Chairman, I think that's one of the things that Wade was talking about, and we'll well, the, Martha and I can clarify this, but I think that they were saying that third party is you have a party, someone shows up, they bring booze, get into a fight, get cause problems, do something that the person that rented the pavilion didn't know about. This protects them, I guess, in case that kind of, that third party yeah. debauchery or shenanigans happen. The, the, the people who rent, who rent the pavilion um, are informed that they, they're not to serve the alcohol. Well, it's it's the word provided that worries me most. 
that, would you be more comfortable if I reworked it? I would. I just don't know what the what yeah, what, what a sure better I, what better language would be. Well, let's yeah. talk to Wayne. Wayne what is here, and he he'll give us the guidance that we okay. need. Right. The, the really. thing that pops in my mind, Joe, and you can run this by Wayne. It may not be appropriate, but if you struck the word "provided" and put in there covertly consumed or something like that. Or just that consumed, I think, would be yeah. an improvement. Because the assumption is that it would be covertly assumed or consumed. Okay, so will you uh, rework that, Martha? Bring it back to us. Rework that. Okay. Um, and I'll report back to Mike. Great. Now let's we'll move on to the let's move on to the next okay. item. Um, I gave you a letter. Do you want me to read the intro or do We've you read it. We better? Okay. All right. Uh, Castleton Select Board. The mission of the Castleton Recreation Commission. We, we've, we've read it. We, I, I, don't, oh, okay. I think you have to do that unless okay. somebody wants it. All right. read. So no. then coming down, it said, you know, we would like to have a discussion on several of these, what we see as obstacles. And the biggest obstacle, the biggest hurdle if, for the future of REC is the um, possible sale of the CBS building at any time. We cannot ensure continuation of programming nor explore more lucrative rental <coughs> revenue if the building uh, will not be available into the unforeseeable future. Now, we have a, uh, an example of that with the um, Boys and Girls Club. Um, they, they are kind of quasi-interested, but they won't do it for anything, anybody. They wouldn't come and rent from us if they didn't have at least a five-year that, um, lease. I think one of the things we should clarify is is that who is responsible for renting? Is it the town government or the uh, town manager or is it the Recreation Commission? It's it's the joint select boards of Castleton and Hubbardton. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I, I understand that, but what we need to do is we want to move this thing forward. We, we want to do whatever we can to, um, you know, like, this, has the position of the select board changed concerning the sale of the CBS? I don't think we can comment on that because we have a, <coughs> we have a meeting scheduled with the Hubbardton Select Board. We'll see what happens at that meeting. Maybe something can be resolved. Maybe it can. Uh, when, when too many are you at, too many at moving liberty parts. to tell me when that meeting is? The meeting is next Monday, I believe. It would be an executive session because of the fact that it may involve possible litigation and, of course, real estate. So that would be the third? Third, yes. Third week, from, week from tonight. Okay. Um, okay. Um, can, can you tell me if there are any um, interested buyers? Mike, can you answer that quickly? Not since the last comment I made about it, which was somebody kicked a tire on it, but nobody's get, nobody submitted a purchase and sales agreement or talked anything seriously about a, an amount or a term or anything like that. There have not been any formal offers recently, correct? And the last one I shared with the public was um, I, uh, Smith's. They, they came and talked to me about over a month ago um, with... Uh, interest and they've never come back but they didn't submit an offer correct no there's no offer no no we've never received an offer uh, from anybody since going back to Tersa Brannick. Tersa Brannick Tersa Brannick. Yeah. okay that meeting Martha is at six o'clock it is and it's going to be here and it's going to open with an executive session there, it's going to open with an executive session what happens after that I can't mm -hmm. forecast okay. at this point um, is there anything that the Commission and um, the CBS Coalition can do to, to help move this forward? I think that's what we're trying to do by having the meeting with the Hubbardton Select Board. That's the purpose of the meeting. Joe? Well, and I would add that uh, obviously you've, you've had significant participation from Hubbardton's citizens in the Commission. At least that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, they probably have more leverage than anyone else in this matter if they would speak directly to their select board about their concerns and their and hopes and dreams. We, I, I did mention that, or it was mentioned um, to um, uh, Matt Ryan and um, 
he, he, I guess he wasn't so sure that they had much fault. Yeah. That was his reaction. They had what, Martha? That, he, that, the, that the people talking, the Hubbard and residents didn't have um, a big impact on, on the Hubbard and Select Board's decision. Okay. Probably doesn't hurt to try. Well, they well, you're right. Yeah, I can't. They voted on town meeting day to sell the building. And then they voted to spend up to, up to, and they emphasized up to, $20,000 yeah. for uh, expenses. Now, we've sent them uh, two, inv two invoices on current expenses and have not received anything, any payment so far. Okay. Well, that, that, that uh, $20,000 wouldn't be available until July 1, anyway. Right. No, that's correct. That's yeah. correct. So. Um, Can I add one more thing before we move on? Sure. Just, Martha, you might want to share with your um, Harvard Inn compatriots that uh, the more noise they make, as far as what they would like to see their select board do, the more, you know, the more their select board hears their comments and concerns, mm -hmm. the more impact they might have. Whereas if they just said one thing once and then didn't bother saying anything again, it would have less, like, sometimes when people want us to move on something and they come and see us repeatedly and eventually they either get a straight answer or they get some action. And perhaps they, if they did the same, they could influence their select board into making whatever decision they feel is appropriate. Okay, Martha, move on. One, our last one is um, if CBS is sold, uh, what are the select board's plans to not leave REC out in the cold? We have made it very clear, and it was in the motion, that if the building is sold, REC would not be left out in the cold. So there would have to be adequate provisions for the rec department. So does that include um, a facility? You need one in the winter. <laughs> you certainly do. <laughs> um, That's, that is that is okay. that is an open 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 question, and but oh, there has been okay. some discussion of it. Yes. All right. So it's an open question, but you have talked about it, and. There's been a little kicking around of it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, I don't know if you folks know, but there, there's a lot going on down at the village school now. Mm -hmm. um, well, you want to ch chime in here and tell them all what you've got going on down there? Absolutely. More by the day. Um, we got uh, we got indoor walking that's now been requested throughout the summer. Uh, it started just as an indoor option for safe walking, but the folks have found a lot of good community there too, which they found to be an extra factor that they enjoy. So we're going to be doing indoor walking. There are a ton of sessions of pickleball happening because people can't get enough. Um, we have youth sports going on as well, at, which softball is just starting, but that's a little bit more indoor as far as, or outdoor. As far as indoor is concerned, we're doing uh, more open gyms. They started off as just pop-up events to test the water. Now they're regularly added to the schedule. Um, yeah, and there's more stuff happening every day. I, I already, I know I'm, uh, I'm missing stuff, but I, I want to keep the conversation going here. The, the place is coming alive, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't want to uh, make you lose your steam there, though, Martha. I, uh, I have something else that I was going to chime in on, but if you're in the middle of a flow there, I don't want to interrupt that was, you. That was my last, I other a, than just I have a say question don't, for, sell, don't sell yeah. the building, the CPS sure. building. That was my last pitch. <laughs> um, okay, quick, um, quick Dick, question. Has, Dick has a question. Quick question. This is either for Martha or Bo or both. Is, um, if somebody wants to find out what's available at the village school for either adult or youth programs, how would they find out? Is there something on the line or do they have to make a phone call at this point? Either way, uh, although they could look online on the town website under the rec department page or on the rec, uh, rec commission Facebook page or on uh, front porch forum because we post programs on there as they're announced as well. Sure. Or call me, <laughs> email, either one. Joe? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it's our convention to have the police chief present a monthly report on, at the second meeting of the month. Uh, I, I would find it helpful if Bo could provide a written report 
at the first meeting of each month on current activities. Got that, Martha? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's a good suggestion. Excellent. Is that it, Martha? Um, that's it. I, I should do see that Mary Drogery has her hand up there. Yes, Mary. Hi, thank you very much. I know it's very late, um, but I just have one quick question, and I, I, I think it came up in uh, last week, last select board meeting, or maybe the one before, about the Rutland Regional Planning Commission Municipal Building Energy Audit Grants, and you had talked about the two potential town buildings you were considering uh, applying for that money was CVS or the town garage, and I recognize that Hubberton owns 11% of the building still, and it makes decisions hard. Uh, but having said all that, I'm wondering uh, if CBS building is still uh, being considered for the for that grant program or not. Mike, I sent a response back to, I think it was you, Martha, today, uh, and to Bo, mm -hmm. um, saying, uh, and I think to the select board, I sent some messages like, maybe, maybe it's a great project for uh, REC to take on. You know what you want to say in that for the energy stuff, and I'll provide you with the technical things like if you need like records of when things were last fixed or purchased and stuff like that so um that that was what i sent back to you guys today okay anything and, else and to answer mary Drogi's question it can be both it doesn't ha it doesn't have to be one or the other you know me jim i've got a comment before everybody leaves the podium here I'm very disappointed in the committee of consolidating the schools they said nothing about kicking you guys to the curb when we consolidated the schools and that's exactly what they did they kicked you out of the gym up there right okay. they never they never said a word about that when they said oh we're going to consolidate but, but these we schools were, we were um we were not allowed in um uh, right after that jack sawyer incident we were not allowed in for that long so that started it not the consolidating the schools and doing away with the gym down to the castle of the Witch School? No. no, we haven't been in, we haven't had regular programming up there for a couple of years, three. Because uh, of the Jack, sorry? Yeah. Well, Why the not? The district just locked down. Why not? They, they felt that they couldn't, um, that they couldn't provide s adequate safety. No. How about, is, it, is the facility used on Saturdays and Sundays also? All day Saturday, all day Sunday? Um, not all day. Saturdays, there's Saturdays, there's pickleball. No, you're talking about the other schools. School. Oh, CBS. Not, not, school. We're not, talking not, about the elementary school. CBS. Well, whenever we try to get something going there, we are told that, that it's already used. So that's the best I can tell you. Okay. And, and I did check with for Haven, and they're being shut out. Their wreck is being shut out as well. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Anything else on this? Uh, I'm Jack, sorry. Anything else, Bob? No, I didn't go sorry. back in history. Bob. I'm sorry, Mary. No, I, I didn't go back in history. Bob asked me sure. ever since Jack Sawyer. Right. I don't I, know about that. I just asked uh, Nicole Rice, and she said, yeah, we haven't been able to get our wreck in there. Okay, just, there just because I just got one, one last little bit to this. Oh, but we were told at numerous meetings, ever since they closed the village school, you guys were kicked out of there with not enough gym space for everybody that's what we were told oh. so yeah. now this is just different what yeah. you're saying now yeah okay we haven't, we haven't been in that school for since that years. but they they oh. are saying that there is not enough space right because they're sending their middle schoolers down to the grade school um, to do their sports because they don't have a gym for the middle schoolers so and somebody was coming up to the elementary school too i forget how it was but and they, they're, they're sending kids everywhere mm -hmm. out of there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Bo, well, yeah. that was a question. Okay, Bo. Yes, Quickly, yep. Bo. Uh, is it all right if I go? Oh, it's not Bo. It's Bo, yeah. Yes, Bo. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, just a couple of quick follow ups. Uh, I'm real glad to hear about the meeting that's on the calendar. Um, as I've been asking about it, I hadn't heard anything, and I guess I'm just wondering if we'll be updated, if someone could uh, send us an email just confirming that it happened and whatever you're feeling comfortable sharing about it at the time, even if it's not much, uh, just so that we are kept up to date and can keep our 
wheels turn in here um, or otherwise, you know, we can always just ask to be put on the agenda again, but it is 9.30 and I'm just wondering if we'll be updated. Okay. All set, Martha? All set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that something you can do, Mike? Real quick, like after the meeting. Yeah, I mean, after can after, we sh can we share it with Bo? Because he's asking. Yeah, you, you come out of the meeting and you'll make whatever is allowable after you, you make motions. I, I'll share anything. Did you hear that, Bo? I did. You say I can come to the meeting? <laughs> That's not what was no, said. Back down there. I can't hear you, <laughs> wait, Mike. Wait, wait, what, what, one more time for me. I, what can I come to? I will follow up you after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, a couple other questions. Um, well, this isn't so much a question. It's just a response uh, to to Joe and Dick, who again remarked that uh, the the townspeople should be doing more to put pressure on their select boards, which I agree with in sentiment. Um, I also know that the townspeople have been putting a lot of time and labor into this, and at this point, they have their results and the select boards do too. So at this point, it's the select board's job to continue based on the information provided to them that the voters share. Um, so I definitely acknowledge and and even can confirm that, uh, that people are still trying to be in communication with their select boards like we are here. Um, and I think that it would be very encouraging to, to see that same effort from the select boards, which which we are seeing today with the with the meeting put on the agenda and the follow ups after. I know this is uh, quite quite tough to draw out, and everyone's trying their best. Um, but I, I do think that a little bit more acknowledgement should be shared to the to the people who are volunteering their time to express something that they care about when it's not easy for them to be systemically heard. They're trying in the best way they know how. And uh, Bob, if you have any questions about how people are showing up for rec, I would love to talk because whether it's time or money, people are showing up in a big way. And um, yeah, I feel quite exhausted. So uh, if you ever want to talk about efforts being put behind rec or how we're strategizing to front that bill, I think that would be really welcome on my on my part for sure. And I think there might be points that you're potentially confused about or don't have information on that rec, like, as a department perspective has spent a lot of time looking into. So if there is any place that you're concerned, I would really love to talk so that we don't have to wait for like meetings like this. Like I think that sure. I, I'm just anyone on a select board. If you're confused, I would love to talk. Or if you're concerned, I would love to talk. Thank you, Bo. So that I don't have to take up time on these select board meetings, <laughs> which I follow up for. Thank you, Bo. And Thank you, Bo. <sighs> Moving on to the transfer station. Sticker discounts increase percent discount to businesses who pay credit card fees. Is that you, Mike? Yeah, I'm. Sh y yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm sharing with you something that Joe Sessock brought to me, um, asking if, and he he's not speaking for everybody; he's just himself. Um, that is there any possible way the select board could give a little bit more of a discount percentage-wise? Um, for him to buy stickers because when people pay with credit cards he's paying the credit card fee not them because that's how it's set up their store so he's like I i'm i don't get i don't get that i'm not really reaping the benefit of um selling stickers for the town um because the money that he takes in he's paying some of it back out in a percentage what's he looking for um i, I told him i would come and talk to you first to okay. see if you'd even entertain it um but he said, I, I believe, and I, I don't want to, I guess I don't want to say, because if I'm wrong, I don't, then I have to come back and correct it, uh, sure. what he said, uh, for percentage goes. But if it's something that, because if it's affecting him, it probably could be affecting pruners. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and if they're, if when they, somebody buys a sticker and they pay with a credit card, if they're paying for that fee out of their own profits, then it could be a problem with them, too. I, I don't know, though. Go ahead, Dick. <laughs> One at a time, Dick. You're just, um, I just haven't looked that way there, for. There's uh, two. There's two. Only two vendors this concerns with right mm -hmm. right now. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you could provide us at your earliest convenience with the uh, the pertinent numbers, and then we can discuss this at the next meeting, and we'll be able to make a decision at that point in time. What do you want for information? Because I don't know, like percentage versus a number. Like I get, I think it's 
every credit card might be different. I'm not really sure I find that out. It is, I know, at the transfer station. Depending on what right. gets run, the convenience fee can change. All right, then we need three things. We need the amount of stickers they sell in the course of a year or a month or whatever is appropriate. We need what they pay us for the stickers and what the worst case credit card fee is. Sound about right, Bob? Yeah, I, I guess unless I you want to add something to that, I wasn't aware of that they were making a profit on selling our stickers. Well, it wasn't a lot, but there, there is some. They got to have a little something. I understand that. It but wasn't I, a lot. I don't know what that is. Well, that's why I'm asking Mike to provide us with that. And I thought if I came to the town and paid my taxes with a credit card, I'm about ninety percent sure the town was going to charge me the fee for me using that credit card. Why can't he do the same at his store? It depends on the credit card company that you go through. We searched and searched, Nancy Trudeau, I should say, searched and searched to find companies that would pass the convenience fee onto the user, not or the the purchaser, yeah. not on the owner. Mm -hmm. That's so. That's that's the same with this whole, this stuff that you listened to tonight, um, dealing with uh, Hey Gov. Yeah, is they have a a vendor they use, and we want we made sure that we were not paying. The convenience fee, it, it gets passed. Oh, where, where, can I add yeah. one more thing here? Where I'm going with this is if we know what all the numbers are, then we could make a decision to either reduce the amount that the vendors pay us, or we could tell the vendor that they need to charge more. And you know, and if the if our John Q. Public wants to pay forty dollars for a sheet of ten green stickers at the transfer station, or Forty dollars and fifty cents at Sussex. That's their decision. That's right. So you're going to come back with that, Mike, when you get. Yeah, there. I just want to bring I'm it up not, to you. I'm not necessarily hear what you have to say about it. Okay. I'm not necessarily saying the town should absorb the cost. I just want to know what the numbers are, and then we can make a decision. Right. Okay, Merrily. What is the cost of a sticker? Uh, there's two different stickers. Two dollars or four fifty. Oh, is it four fifty now? I forgot. Mm -hmm. I just went over. Now for Billy, it'd be four fifty because it's a truck. No, the big bags, the the, the thirty the gallon size. bags, oh. yeah, are are four fifty, and the um, thirteen gallon bags are two dollars. There's no rate just to come. Yeah, well, you, your your permit fee gets you in the in the door kind of thing. You can pay for a day pass if you don't want to buy a sticker, or you can run over the scale in your in your vehicle and weigh. So if it's less than so less than a hundred pounds, it's a stand. It's a you know starts off as a fee. I forgot what it was now. Ten bucks. Oh, what's that? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah. So then, the every hundred pounds after that, it goes up. Okay. Okay. So you'll come back with the information for us. All right. Fair way is yeah. to pay. So we move on. Wait, that's the fair way. Is there any manager's yeah. report? Yes. You have one, Mike. Yeah. You should have stopped. Can we back up for just a second? Is there? I don't have one. What's that? I don't have one. No, I don't either. I don't have one. I have a question for Mr. Spalding. Question for what? It shouldn't take long. He does. Yeah. And I hey, Bob, yeah. uh, question. Um, is there anything else you can think of we need from Mike concerning the, the transfer station stickers? No, you covered it. Okay. Do you guys don't have the manager report in your in your no. packet anywhere? No. no. I never got so. one. No. You got one? Of course I do. Well, when did you pick up your packet? must have been after I did. No, you were the first one. I was the first one. I don't. I don't. You I guys don't have, don't have one either. either? Nor I did I get one electronically. So I what? didn't send it out electronically. So what do you I'll, want? I'll, I'll, I mean, I don't have to brief anything. Yeah, what I just, do you want to give you a copy so you have what I wrote? Okay. We need two more. You got one, Bob? I don't have one. No. You do now, but thank you. I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's anything really on there. That was uh, action. You already did one of them. That was the generator. The other thing I haven't spoken to you about is the. Uh, I gave you a copy of an invoice from a local contractor. Um, oh yeah, that was our. Let's see if they needed. Invoice. Yeah, that's the, those are the only action needed ones. Yeah. So you talked about it, Jimmy. You have it. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, I just got that today. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I don't advise me. I like Mike's the suggestion. Go and ask to him. replace that piece of plastic pipe. Yeah. Yeah. If the board approves it, so you got a copy of the invoice. So I just we just received it today, um, and this is in addition to the first one I brought to your attention um, from the plumbing and heating side of the house. So all total, you're talking like twenty five hundred dollars 
between the two. And I made a statement earlier. I said there's nothing proving that we did do the damage, and there's nothing proving we didn't do the damage. Um, and I haven't been back to the homeowner yet to say, okay, it's been considered, and this is what the select board would like to do. And I've been vague because I didn't know if you want to, how you want to deal with this. How would you like to deal with it, folks? I don't think we should be talking about this in open session. Well, that's what Are I'm saying. That's why I haven't March? used any names. Okay. All right. Yeah. We received this March 27th. We re I received it from Melanie today because he dropped it off today. Well, I'm trying to figure out what that stamp says. Oh, that's probably should say today. We stamped it in today. Yes, that's 27. Okay. I agree with Bob. We shouldn't be talking about this in open session. Why not? Yeah, why not? I don't know if it'll go to litigation, but if it goes to litigation, then it's executive session. This is just an invoice. Been, if you want to go that route, it's uh, been talked about before, so it's not okay. It's not a secret. All right. I'm going to authorize the town manager to do what he said at the beginning of the meeting. Which is? Well, you, not everybody was here at the time. We were talking. That's true. That's true. So um, work with a homeowner on this and see if he'll share split the, the, co split the cost with Share it? the cost with us. Yeah, that's only fair. And I like just the way you put it. Can't be proven that we caused the problem, yeah. but it can't be proven that we didn't cause the problem. And the amount of money that we've spent on that project so far exhausted the FEMA money that we had. So anything that's coming out of it now is coming out of our coffers. And a lot of it is due to him infringing on the right of way there. Too. Burdening the easement. And I have right, a, there you go. I'm dealing with our attorney on that as far as a legal document so that in the future, if something happens to that culvert or that, you know, along that uh, easement, that we don't have to deal with this again. Yes. They sign off on it saying, you know that we have they have the responsibility to bear or bear the uh, the burden of taking things that like retaining walls and that kind of stuff you guys agree with having Mike do that sure yes just, any problem with Mike doing that I just have a question if this goes to court the burden of proof is on the plaintiff correct of course it is mm -hmm. yep. so they actually technically have to prove that we caused the problem and our Brent, you were, you know, you I were. I got pictures of it right here. So they took, they took, I went up the other day, they dug it. Took pictures of where we took the line apart. It was all together. And I also took pictures of where it went into the basement. Because when I was up there and Kevin was digging it, he dug to where the new gravel that we put in ended, did not find the leak, and he said to me, it can't be where you guys dug. I'm just going to start at the house, work my way to the well, and put a new line in it. And then after I left, they supposedly found a leak, but I went back up there on my own and took a picture. They ran the water line in a four-inch sleeve. So they went across the driveway at an angle, and then they put it in a four-inch sleeve and ran it into the basement. And what I told Mike and Dave is, if we busted that line the day we were there, because they tested it twice while we were back there, if we busted that line and it had been leaking, common sense would tell me that it would run to that four-inch sleeve into the basement the minute you turn on the water, right? Nowhere else for the water to go when you're in that pipe. We dug it the week of Thanksgiving and he just finally got a leak. No, the frost heated it. That's just what happened. So you're negotiating, Mike. You're the prime negotiator. Okay. okay. But you know, I've I've heard what Brent's had to had to say and I can say you know, there's, you know there's, if I'm going with what you guys just said, then I'll 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 go that route. Or if you're rethinking it, I just want to know. Like, because our guys that dug and stuff are saying, this, you know, when they called the plumber to go there, it was a while, a long while after the work was completed. So, how they found it, I don't know. What would you like to do, folks? I, I think that uh, we want Mike to speak with the landowner, and uh, I think we may be willing to split the cost of this with him. But it's this bill, and there's another bill from the plumber. Yeah, I mean, I can just so it's on. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a Excuse me, Bob. Was that a motion you made at the beginning of the discussion? No. I don't think no, it, it wasn't. You said you were going to authorize the town manager. That wasn't a motion? I guess you could. 
I guess we could put it in a motion if you think it. Well, I'm not saying. I just want to clarify. So put it in a motion to have Mike Mike negotiate the the invoice. All right. So moved as Jim just said. Second. Getting tired, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'll call the call the question. Well, before you all do, those, I have a comment. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. You've got a question, Dick? I had a comment. Make just it. Just a quick it. comment. I just looked at the photographs. It looks like. It doesn't look like the town's responsible, in my opinion. In your opinion, Brett, is the town responsible? Nope. Thank you. I, I've never seen a water line put in that way. Plastic at that. And okay. I'd like to add to that, Jim, that we up there went above and beyond with retaining walls, digging sure around did. the house, a cesspool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no. I mean, uh, way more obstacles than we ever should have to deal with to maintain our culvert. I, uh, I'll vote yes on the motion, but I want the town to play hardball. So that amount, uh, above and beyond the invoice that you received, the invoice to McClure Construction was $447.57. So you're talking about 3,500 ground numbers. Correct. And the motion was to have Mike negotiate. Is right. And we have a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 That takes care of that, Mike. At least for the time being. Mm -hmm. So he says, so they say no, I'll be back and talk to you. Uh, yep, so that, that would conclude anything that's on my report that was actionable. I guess you guys have already, the other stuff, you, the generator you've already approved. Okay. Any questions for Mike? If not, move on to purchase orders. I didn't see any purchase orders in there I didn't either nor did I okay move on to the warrants okay warrant I'm going to make a motion to approve warrant number 0327 R for ten thousand five hundred fifty eight dollars warrant 0314 for twenty eight thousand sixteen dollars and forty nine cents warrant 0316 for five thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars and fifty cents Warrant 0321 for $1,683,059.66. Warrant 0323 for $5,889.06. Warrant 0327 for $87,105.11. Warrant 0316 P for $15,122.72. And warrant 0323 P for $15,000. $15,752.32. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I have two more warrants here. I would move that we approve warrant number 0317P for $612.53 and 0324P for $612.53. I'll second it. In a second, any discussion? I recuse myself. Okay, Dick recuses himself. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. That's it on the warrants. Uh, Mike, we have these two things here. Well, I'm not sure what it is, Jim. Rules of procedure that we had to change. Uh, yeah. Yep. So that just has. Does to everybody have a copy of that? No, we we already approved that. We just have to distribute it for signature. Is that correct, Dale? Yep. As long as it's as long as the wording is acceptable to everybody. Okay. All right. While we're signing, would somebody care to make a motion to approve the rules of procedure, Town of Castle and Select Board? I think we approved that at our last meeting. I don't. Did we sign it though? I thought we, we did not. Hi. Huh? We did not. We we, we were waiting for a change copy. It, to sign these it. are the change copies, I believe. Yes. yes. We said we would sign it once the changes had been made. But we haven't seen it. You didn't see those? Did you know? Right. No. There's only no. one. That you only got. I mean, it'd probably be preferable to give people a chance to review the sure. final we, copy. Why don't we ask Karen to put it in the blue folder and circulate it through the mailboxes? <laughs> well, I can scan it and, and email it to everyone. My that works too, and then put a blue, and then put the blue, blue folder, the folder the and then you can come in, if you agree with it, um, if, there's no, if there's no disagreements, I guess people can come in and sign it. Sounds good to me.
The other one is the uh, policy regarding conflict of interest and ethical conduct. Same thing there. If we Same thing Karen. there. Okay. Karen, put it in the blue folder. You can put it in the mailbox. Scan and everybody. That'll take care of it. Everyone an email, electronic copy. Yeah. Can those email? Yep. Thank you, Mike. You're going to bring us up. Okay. Right? A couple more things for you. Okay. Good. We'll be done with it. Those are select board ones. comments or concerns. I got a couple. Okay. How soon can we get a new one of these now that we've made new appointments? Um, there is a new one. Um, I saw it today, but I'll get you guys a copy of it. Okay. You were supposed to do it. Karen showed me one today. Yeah, we were supposed to do that at the last meeting. I think there was some, there was some wasn't there changes? Probably with changes, yeah. You're welcome. I'm just busting on you a little bit. And? When, when we're advertising our uh, warnings and things, I'd like to see front porch form added because you've got Rutland Herald that if it's Monday, Tuesday, you don't have a Herald. You've got Free Press or the others as a weekly, so they're. So I think it would be prudent to add front porch form to to that. Can that be done, Mike? For for warning of anything, like our, you talk our, about the meetings or some our meetings and things, whether it's select board or DRB or planning or zoning or just anything that has to be worn. Can it also be worn on front porch form? It can be, yeah. It so, can I suggest that we formally act on that at our next meeting? I mean, it really should be this final line on our agenda where we have newspaper designation, Lakes yeah. Region Free Press, and Rutland Held. Let's add it officially there so that it's in the record. Sure. That's fine. And the last one is when are we going to have a special meeting on ARPA? As soon as it can be scheduled. We had tried tentatively for this week, but that didn't happen. So as soon as it can be scheduled. Well, it, so the, who, who's going to be around? If we can talk in next week, not this week, but next week, the third is a meeting with Hubbardin. That's correct. And is there another day that week that fits for everybody? I don't know who's out of town or away or. Oh, well, we yeah, we've got no plans. Tuesday the 4th? Yeah. But shoot for that. Maybe. Sure. Could do that. If we have a meeting, we gotta if we have a meeting with um, Hubbardton for what, an hour on Monday? Why can't we do it at oh, 7 o'clock? Right huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's, we're we're that already good, here. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Even better. I'm okay with that. We just have to make sure that it's warned as a separate meeting yeah. and the public is aware. I'm sure it will be. Okay. So on the 3rd of April, ARPA meeting, following the Hubbardton one? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so for one be, hour? One hour. That's we think that the Hubbardton meeting will take an hour. So we're saying the 3rd meet at 7 o'clock. 6 o'clock for the Hubbardton meeting. So this Hubbardton meeting's at 6, correct? Yep. Okay. Just for your all information, I have no problem with the date. Unless my granddaughter goes to have her twins. Oh. Then I won't be here. you got to tell her. She's got to change that date. I've told her that. Well, you can't she tell says, her. you got to tell the baby. Yeah, yeah that's right. The babies are saying I'm going to come when I'm going to come. They sure are. Oh, I don't see that. So we'll get that warned out there for the, for the 7 p.m. on the 3rd. Perfect. Nothing else on the agenda, just ARPA? That's all? Yes. Yeah. yeah. When do we have a deadline for the submitting a decision on this, Mike? On what? ARPA funds. You have to obligate the funds by December 31st of 2024. Okay. And you have to expend them by December 31st of 2026. Two years to expend them. Twenty-four and twenty-six, not twenty-four and twenty-five. Okay. okay anything else on uh, recap? I guess that take care of that. If not, do you need an executive session, Mike? C can we? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, can we address select board comments and or concerns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought we we, we, we didn't started really, on that. Yeah. But you didn't ask anyone else. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get over it. I then. asked Mary Lee, and that was it. 
I mean, go ahead, Joe. Uh, this is just uh, related to the, the two um, documents that we, I think, all received. One from uh, Norman Spafford, Jr. Yes. I assume that all of our sidewalks have uh, what he's asking for? No. They do not. What is, what is a blind track? They have a bumped, like a metal bump track that they can feel if they're using any kind of a, a device, like walking. And um, so the ones that have been put in so far, I think there's a couple at the corner, Brent, I didn't, I, I think, but not all of them have it. So when they're transitioning to a place that's open, um, like crossing up, they can't see that's a parking lot, let's say, uh, uh, across the... So th these are not this, the steel plates that have the bumps on them? Yeah, those are the ones at the, the, the when you first meet something. Intersection. Yes, but as far as like anything that goes across the whole thing, I'm not aware of what that is. I, d I didn't receive that, so I don't know. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't recall All seeing it. All I know about is the bolt plates, usually at intersections. This is addressed to Castleton Select Board and Manager, dated 310-23. It looks like this. You didn't get nothing like that? I haven't seen anything like that. Okay. I got one of those. It yeah, was in our boxes. I got one. So this was addressed at the meeting that we had about the sidewalks, about making sure those things were there, as well as protecting his driveway. They're going to bring out some uh, guardrails so that was, I took some pictures of it. People cut right across his driveway into into Dunkin' Donuts, and so I took some photos of it to share with uh, the state, um, Pete Pochop and Teresa Gilman, um, in particular. Um, and they're going to they understand it now because um, we were told, and I I was not told personally, but I was told that Mr. Spafford was in the road, and that's what kind of was. He has a an advocate now, and the advocate reached out to Dave Fabricius. He called me. I asked them to reach, go, call back the advocate to call Teresa and Pete, who are the state reps, to bring up their concern with that. So if there's something that can be built into the project, that they address it. He's looking for just something at the corner or throughout all of town? I, I don't know. I have to find out because I only know of the stuff that's at the transitions, but I didn't. I don't know of anything that goes the whole length. So we'll find out, um, or I'll, I'll follow up with Dave because um, he, he was supposed to reach out to uh, Teresa and Pete to ask him about this. Okay. Anything else, Joe? Yeah, my second uh, point is related to the anonymous letter we got regarding the regional ambulance service. Mm. I didn't get that. That I, I did get. get. And it, it's after you pick up your packet, Mary Lee, so it's in your box over there. I guess my first question is, uh, who is our representative? Yeah, Linda Dutton, and we received. So I held off on this stuff because we didn't, we hadn't received the appointment letters from Regional Ambulance Service, but we got them today. So I didn't put it. I didn't have Karen add to the ask to add it to the agenda because of that that letter. Alita Dutton, you said is she's right. our representative to the Rutland Ambulance the Service. Yeah. So you'll need to reach out to her to see if she's willing to do it again. And, and we'll want to find out, I mean, does and she know about this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. She needs to be aware of that. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Dick? Go I'm good. Bob? Um, where are we at with the salt and sand shed, Mike? <laughs> mm -hmm. waiting, we're just waiting right now to hear uh, whether or not we got approved for the grant and what that total amount was. Just waiting on the grant? Yep. Okay. And then we have $253,000... Um, set aside right now for the town share um, but until we get the grant back I can't come back to you and and give you a, a delta on the amounts yet okay I just didn't want it to be put in the closet and forgotten about no we're I'm I'm assuming that they said in March they would meet to discuss these grants so this we, March yeah okay. so we should be hearing something you know probably in April okay my assumption would be Anything else? Like board concerns? Joe covered the two, the other two of that had so. Okay, we all set. You don't need an executive session, you said, Mike. I, I don't need anything though. No. Okay. Anybody else need one? <laughs> if not, is there a motion? Make a motion. We adjourn. Is I'll there a second? second it? I'll second it. Huh? You don't have to ask. I'll second it. All those in favor of adjourning at uh, nine fifty. Aye. 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 Aye.